Okay. Let me just. Let me, let me, let me, let me. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem. Right. Now, now I bet Manny Sosa. Oh. Okay. I just, just gotta get this right. Get this right. Welcome to the Village of America Board of Trustees work session uh, for February 13th, 2023. Uh, there's an emergency exit on my right. There's an emergency exit on my left. Uh, please uh, mute your phone uh, if you have one tonight. And uh, if there's an emergency, there are enough uh, emergency service personnel in the room tonight to help us all out. Uh, what I'm gonna do tonight, because we have two groups of people uh, who have an interest in matters uh, before the board of trustees in the work session. So I usually, we usually uh, handle them first so people can go home and visit with their families. Uh, so the first item we're gonna handle open the meeting. Yeah. is opening the meeting. There you go. Uh, may I have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and besides that, the first item we're going to go is the 2A of new business. It's the fire department presentation. Uh, they want to replace engine 31. Uh, and tonight, doing a presentation is uh, Fire Chief James Barney. Mr. Barney, please. The podium is all yours. Before Mr. Barney gets started, I just want to point out that we have an all volunteer fire department in the community. We have five different companies. Uh, four engine companies and one ladder company. And on a kind of a, a cyclical basis based upon uh, years and amount of time that a truck has been in service, we replace trucks uh, because you're only allowed to use a fire truck uh, for a certain number of years. Uh, things get worn out, things get replaced. So tonight the fire department is gonna tell us about the next truck that we're scheduled to get uh, because we have a rotation. We wanna keep the uh, equipment in fairly good condition, and uh, we want to keep our all volunteers safe. James, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the board for allowing us to come to you with this proposal. Okay. Um, the Village of Romanic Fire Department um, is looking to replace Engine 41, which is Columbia Engine and Host Company Number Two's first uh, first two piece of equipment. Um, we have an extensive number of years of experience. Um, that is uh, building our our actual committee up that reviewed all the specs and all the possibilities that we could go with. Um, I believe it was over, I want to say, 225 years of service that we put everyone on the on the committee together, their years of experience. Uh, a quick background on the uh, fire department itself. Um, we're made up of five different fire companies and we occupy four different firehouses in the building. We have two primary water supply pumpers, two rescue pumpers, two ladder trucks, and one reserve pumper. The engine that we're looking to replace is one of our rescue pumpers. Um, in the fire department, we currently have 195 members. 99 of those members are interior certified and active. We have 54 qualified apparatus operators. <laughs> in the year 2022, we went on 822 alarms. 57 of those were rescue or jaws of life alarms. 41 of those were confirmed actual fires. Just to give you a little basis of what surrounds our village, the town of Mamaronic is comprised of 14 career staff and 49 active interior volunteers. The Harrison Fire Department has 16 career staff and 40 active interior volunteers. Both of those communities went on three quarters of the alarms that we went on in 2022. We put 20, we put 3,180 hours of training in in the year 2022 as a volunteer organization. Uh, most recently, on January 31st, our, our volunteers responded to an active fire at 640 Mamaroneck Avenue. 
It was at 1.30 a.m. and a three-story commercial storefront, eight apartments located above it. We evacuated approximately 25 residents without incident while the fire was extinguished by other members. Um, in the slides, if you go to slide four, there's a few photos of that and then the, uh, the next incident, um, more recent department activity that we've had. On February 10th, just on Friday, we responded to an active truck fire on Interstate 95. This was during rush hour at 9 a.m. So you can imagine the traffic backup that was caused by the, act, by the uh, accident and the fire. It was also extinguished by our volunteer membership without any other incident. And we were able to open up the roadway with the state police as quickly as possible. The Village of Mimarnik Fire Department is responsible for 3.8 miles of interstate in New York State. So on the next slide, we're gonna to go to the need for replacement. The exceed, our Engine 41's current lifespan has been exceeded. As a frontline apparatus, the National Fire Protection Agency recommends 20 years as a frontline piece of equipment. After that, it can become a reserve, a reserve piece of equipment. Engine 41 is currently 26 years old today. So the projected arrival of a new apparatus would put that apparatus at 30 years going into the new spare piece of equipment. It has 5,760 engine hours on it, which converts to the equivalent of 345,000 miles. Um, that, is a, that is a formula that they derived because quite often this, these pieces of equipment are just sitting running out in the middle of the road. So the equivalent of you know, the 40,000 driven miles on it mean almost nothing to the, to the uh, wear and tear on the vehicle. <clears throat> Engine 41 alone responded to 658 alarms of the 2022 total. In 2011, <clears throat> Chief Dean DeLitta put together a projected replacement schedule that was to replace all the, all the apparatus uh, every five years, one piece, one piece every five years. Uh, he started the he started the motion the motion of that in 2010 with the purchase of our tower ladder tower ladder twin. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, due to the way things are being built, that progress has slowed a little bit. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you will see where we currently are with the replacement um, the replacement schedule of the vehicles. <clears throat> one more one more back, please. Um, with, the, with the proposed replacement of Engine 41, that arrival will take place in 2024, approximately 30 years after the initial purchase of Engine 41. We have two more pieces of equipment that would need to potentially be replaced over the course of the next five and then 10 years also. Um, but again, by following this schedule, it's going to best suit the village so that these pieces of equipment are not deteriorating at the same time. The current engine 41 is a 1997 Marty Murray fire rescue pumper. It's a Spartan Gladiator eight person full tilt, full tilt cab with an Allison transmission, 1500 gallon per minute pump and a 500 gallon water supply. It has an onboard generator, onboard sea lighting. The cab is comprised of aluminum and it, it houses purse rescue extrication equipment, also known as the jaws of life. This vehicle is designed for initial fire, water supply and rescue operations. So James, let me interrupt you for one quick question. So this responds in, in 41 because it has jaws of life respond to the highways all the time? Highway, any, any motor vehicle accident, any uh, throughway call, any, Type of rescue uh, and the elevator rescues or stuck elevators, anything that has the word rescue or entrapment, that that is one of the two apparatus that goes to it. May I ask you, did the jaws of life come with it? That's like a piece of the equipment. The jaws of life are a essential tool. Um, they they're included they, in the cost is what I'm asking. They're included in the cost mm -hmm. of this of this proposal uh, because the set that we have is over 15 years old and it's no longer going to be serviced. So the new set is now part of the proposal because it has to be phased in. 
as the other is phased out. Go ahead. And I'm sorry, while we're in <laughs> the succession of bad questions, um, and you said this is the only um, truck that is like this? Or you said, or two? We have two. two. Okay. Yes. The proposed replacement engine 41 would be a 2025 Seagrave Marauder full tilt cab, eight person cab. Bobby, could you go to the next one, please? Um, it has a Cummins motor, 525 horsepower, 1500 gallon per minute tank uh, pump. And we are looking to increase the initial water on the tank that we store on the apparatus to 750. It will provide more safety for our initial attack operations because we'll have more water for the firefighters while the operator outside is hooking to a fire hydrant. <clears throat> it, it would come equipped with an onboard generator and extrication flat power plant to power the jaws of life and on scene lighting. And it is going to be a all stainless steel cab and body, which um, Seagrave prides itself. It is the strongest and safest in the industry. <clears throat> Again, it will be a design for initial attack water supply and rescue operations. And then the next couple of slides are a few, um, a few photos of basically what the apparatus will look like, um, um, color aside, what the shape, size, and dimensions of the apparatus are identical. Mayor? Yes, Mayor. sir. Thanks. You have um, additional 250 gallons. So does that make the truck bigger? Is it the same size? Um, it, it does not make the truck bigger. It just raises the height of the initial hose bed um, up approximately seven inches, okay. um, which is still lower than our existing hose bed on our current rig. So it's a problem for some people, but it's actually an improvement for us, even though we added the extra one. It's so, a three tons of water. Crazy amount. Yeah. I guess you go to school pretty quick when you. Yeah. Very quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a there is a uh, schematic, a CAD, a uh, computer aided drawing. Um, that is exactly what the apparatus will look like. Um, that's the preliminary drawings that the company gives us. <clears throat> The next slide is standard equipment that must be sold with the apparatus. There's no way to get it without that stuff on it. It's the NFPA standard, and that's the way it goes. Just quickly explain NFPA standard. So people. National Fire Protection Agency is basically law without being law. Um, you, if you don't follow it and something goes wrong, you're liable. It's an, it's an accepted standard within the nation. So, so ladders, the hooks, the, the ladders, there's specific ladders with weight ratings and extension uh, distances and the hooks have to be for a certain weight load also and you have to have that stuff so that's why they make it where it's part of the proposal that comes with the apparatus. Quick, quick question chief, um, the, the, the existing one, the one we're taking out of service has yeah. this stuff on it, uh, is there any way we can use that stuff? So we can, um, but the that apparatus is going, is scheduled to become our spare apparatus. So we, rather than take old equipment off something, put it on something new and transfer it every month as we're servicing vehicles or something's out of service, um, it's better to replace the equipment um, within the period of time because those ladders that are on our apparatus were bought 26 years ago. So they, they, have, they have seen their wear and tear and there, there's really no purpose on putting it on something for another 20 years. Yeah. Oh, this one. oh, sorry, thanks. If you um, have to, if the jaws of life for the existing equipment is not going to be maintained, do you need another jaws of life for this older machine? We older have, work? so we have, we currently, we've been operating on two types of systems. We have a battery operate system and we have a hydraulic pressure operate system. The battery operated yeah. system is working, um, but there it has its limitations and um, it is not 100%, you know, you can't use it in water, you can't use it in flood water, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, once you use it, the warranty is void, even if, if it even works for you. Mm -hmm. um, so 
if we were to not replace the hydraulic system, we would be tying our hands. No, I mean <clears throat> on the old truck. Right. So so that it's being phased out, but we are not without tools currently. Okay. If it if it was to be phased out prior to the replacement, mm -hmm. we would not be without tools. The problem. Okay. And you wouldn't have to replace it if it's your backup equipment. I guess that's not yeah, right. it's it's not backup, it's front line, but it isn't the first thing that would come off of the engine okay. at a core. So, it, it, and forgive me. And so, if you need two jaws of life, there's a lot of stuff going on. You, you have them. We have. We currently, yes, we have a set. The other rescue apparatus has a set as well, and we have more than one piece of everything. And, and forgive my ignorance on this, Chief. Uh, but is a jaws of life something you can throw in the trunk of a car or or in a different? But it's got to be attached to the to the engine or it's, what? The, the hydraulic system needs to be attached to the yeah. to the I, I, thought, I just want the batteries to can be taken anywhere, mm -hmm. but you're at the mercy of the battery. Got it, got it. Um, the, the next slide is uh, a list of the hose that would need to be um, added to the purchase. Um, it's just standard supply hose, five inch supply hose and attack lines. Um, it's it's a relatively uh, standard standard list of hose with, it, with the pricing, the current pricing. That's, and those are today's prices. <clears throat> The next slide is just a replacement schedule of, of where we started with this process. Um, we, we've we met, it's it's been a long road putting this together. Um, <clears throat> last year in February, the board uh, provided us the, the means to go forward and, and start to build. Um, so it's it, it took a long time to get the deal, to get the, the words and the, the drawings together from Seabrae because they're so busy because no one's built anything for two years. So everybody's playing catch up there. Um, so, you know, with one buying one piece of equipment, you're not necessarily a priority when New York City's purchasing 20 yeah, yeah, yeah. pieces of equipment at a time. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the projected delivery for the apparatus, if we were to sign this month, would be June of 2025. Wow. The proposal states a minimum of 800 days. A minimum. Uh, the next slide is just um, the, the cost of the radio equipment that would have to be purchased uh, for the apparatus. Again, with the existing piece of equipment, it would not be getting surplus. It would be being used, so we can't get rid of those radios. The final slide um, is just a breakdown of the cost of the, the, the purchase and the apparatus. Um, I just I want to I want to just take a moment to note. I know that we just purchased an apparatus, signed for an apparatus in 2020, and it finally came in April of last year. The cost of that apparatus, if you were to build it today and sign tomorrow, is 25% higher than it was in 2020. So they are seeing steady increases of all equipment and apparatus of 20 to 30% every year. That that's just the the inflation and the climate that we're in. So, Chief, if, if we decide to buy this now, and like I said, it's an eight hundred day leg, right? Mm -hmm. But we lock it in at the price now. I think that is the that is the great question. Um, there's there's been a lot of back and forth on that. There's been communities that have had the price change on them, and uh, they've run into problems. Um, but there's also communities that are buying it on the cooperative that we would be purchasing it under and have had no issues at all. Um, but there's you, there's no way to guarantee what that price is going to wind up being on that last day. But I, it, I haven't heard anybody had an issue with the, the program that we're using. When you say cooperative, what do you mean? Dan was in yeah, so the, the quote is from uh, um, source through uh, HGAC, which I believe is the Houston Galveston Area Cooperative. Uh, we purchased equipment from them in the past. Uh, the uh, electrician's bucket truck uh, was purchased to them. I think we worked with um, MEMS uh, when their last ambulance purchase. We actually got the vendor to use the HGAC pricing. Which is it more competitive than the original book they received. So it's been a good, uh, good, solid uh, option for us. 
yeah. mayor, yeah. many, many departments, fire yeah. departments. Yeah. 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 And we were under that same cooperative as well. So yeah. we didn't have any issues with that. I mean, Houston has a national reputation for um, emergency service. <laughs> so that is that is the poll presentation for tonight. If there's any other questions, you want a board of questions? No, I think you did an excellent job. Thank you. Does everybody did. Does anybody have staff have questions? Uh, no, everything um, that James has, has described for the vehicle. So I do want to add one thing that um, we're making it a policy within the staff that um, if any vendor, um, once we issue the PO, raises our prices, um, we are no longer working with that vendor anymore. So mm -hmm. it's that it's at their peril if they want to. And if the price, and if we get a price increase, it'll come back to us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. we're, if, if I just take it out of carnival. The, ven the vendor, <laughs> the vendor that we work with, um, he's not, you know, a stranger to the area. He's only raised in Russia County. Um, he he's not going to wait until 2025 to tell you the first minute price increase. Right. So as, as he sees the climate change and as he sees the dozens of other pieces of equipment that have been purchased by the surrounding I mean, the town of Marion just bought two pieces. Um, as he sees those hard, come in, if there's time. price changing, yeah. he's definitely going to, going to advise us. They had a hard time. They, they bought it. When, I, when I was there, they bought a truck and the, the truck was askew yeah. and they had to send it back. It, it was a big it was a thing. Major, major problem. It was a major problem, yeah. And truck went down the street like that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. So the question to the board is, is everybody planning on putting this on for the regular session? Uh, what is that, the 27th? Yep. Yes, yeah, if you have additional questions, we'll ask them then, but I think, I think we'll wait. Manny? Yeah. Nora? Yes. Solani? Yes. All right, so how this usually works, almost all the time is you, know, you, you bring a, a, an issue like this to the board at the work session. You discuss it at the work session. You don't make a decision that night, but we put it on for the regular session, uh, the next meeting. The next meeting is the 27th. Uh, so you know, you're looking good on the 27th. You want to come dressed up nice, you know, <laughs> let the community see uh, what you do, my suggestion. But, uh, you know, you, you look good for the 27th. All right. Good now. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. And thank you for everything you do, guys and gals. And you, you do a great job, and we appreciate it. And we want to make sure as you do that job, you have everything you need to keep yourself safe and the community safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the next group of customers are coming. Thank you. That we have here tonight. Uh, and we're going to take them. Uh, is discuss a, a, a proposal that has to do with the future of the Board of Control and with, uh, hence, LMCTV. Uh, the board will indulge me for a minute so that I can get my thoughts together, um, talk about this for a minute. Uh, a little history of me in the board of control. I became a trust. I was elected trustee in uh, 2004, and at the time, I was the only member of my political party that had a seat on the board of trustees. Uh, so the uh, the mayor at that time gave me one liaison assignment, and only one liaison assignment, and that was to the board of control. Uh, and you know, I. The reasons for that were his reasons and for me, it really worked out because it, it, it got me to understand how LMC and the Board of Control worked. Uh, it had, it, it increased uh, my respect and admiration for the job that LMC has done below these 40 something years. Uh, to me, the Board of Control and its relationship to LMC as a partnership. Uh, at one point, our, our four fathers and mothers in the community decided that it was imperative that when cable TV was coming into the community, that we directed the resources that cable TV gave the community to build something special. And we built something special. Uh, 
something that no other community around us has, something that's the envy of many communities, a, an organization that at the time knit all three communities, the village of Largemouth, the town of Mamaric, and the village of Mamaric together. It, it was another uniting force. Uh, and it worked well for a lot of years. And then, you know, as, as happens, uh, people forget their primary purpose, right? And the primary purpose of LMCTV was to educate the community, to show the community how their government works, to tell the community stories, and to, in times of trouble, which we have all experienced these last uh, three or four years, to act like a conduit for the government to reach out to the members of the community, especially who need help, uh, and to show them what we are doing, to show them how it's getting done, to show them how they can get help, and to once again, knit us all together. Now, the emergencies pass, you know, and uh, I think people forget just how integral LMC TV has been to the growth of this community, and especially to the not-for-profits. Uh, because we have a lot of not-for-profits and as government officials, we all depend upon them. Uh, I can't tell you the number of people that I have uh, referred to the CRC. I can't tell you the number of families that I've told about the community counseling center. Uh, and you know, LMC TV, I look at LMC TV like those two uh, entities. They are very important to us as a community. So, you know, a year, a year and a half ago, Lodgemont announced its intention uh, to leave the Board of Control. And, you know, that, I, I'm not going to, you know, that's their decision. And, you know, they, they, you know, they, they have their own uh, community to run over there. Uh, so that left the town of Mamaronek and the village of Mamaronek as the two surviving members of the Board of Control. Uh, we, we, I, I had talked to members of the town board and I had, you know, heard from uh, them about their views on moving forward. So I asked them, you know, instead of just having conversations, I have the conversation with my whole board and just tell me what it is you have in mind because it was coming out in drips and drips. And they sent the proposal and uh, the proposal to me, uh, it changes the relationship that LMC TV and the three two municipalities have from one of partners uh, to one of uh, customers and providers, right? So th there's not that relationship anymore of uh, we're all in this together. Uh, it, it's it's more like you know we're shopping for a service and right now we've picked you. Uh, so you know there are a lot of things you know about that proposal, uh, you know, and and I understand part of uh, their argument, uh, or not their argument, their, 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 their views is that, you know, this is the uh, water control is a, is a IMA. This is just another IMA. IMA it, meaning? I, intermunicipal agreement. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sometimes I, I lapse into jargon. For the folks who don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, right now, LMC TV, let's just say, they decide that their, uh, their studio lights are obsolete and they need new studio lights. They come to the Board of Control and the, at the time, three members of the Board of Control uh, would review the request and uh, provide for it because the Board of Control has been a recipitory of both the franchise fees and the PEG money. So we had the PEG money is the, the, the capital money that the, the cable franchises pay to the community that's supposed to just go to capital improvements like cameras, lights, microphones, you know, cording, you know, you know, you know, the stuff that you made your living doing. Okay. Uh, so if that would have changed, now the people from LMC TV would have to go to this board, make a presentation. They would have to go to the town of Mamaric board, make a presentation. They would have to go to Largemont's board, and make a presentation. And, you know, what if three members of one of those boards, you know, don't want to uh, move forward? What do we do then? 
it, it, it always, to me, this was something that operated seamlessly and operated seamlessly for 40 something years. And I was very sad when Largemont left, but as I said before, that's, you know, their want. Uh, and, but I think I, we have to really think carefully, do we want to not have a border control? Uh, you know, the, the, uh, one of the reasons for getting rid of the border control is that, you know, the, uh, the, the administrator gets a, a small stipend and the uh, controller of the border control get a small stipend. The controller is the, uh... the, the controller is the, the the administrator is the, by by the agreement the administrator is the village manager the village of Mamaroneck and the controller is the town of the, for, the controller is the town of Mamaroneck's controller. Got it. I did that. And this has been going on uh, since time immemorial. Uh, so we have we have that, and uh, you know I, I I have been thinking about this a lot, and of course we need to. Revamp the IMA because, or the or the board of control because now, there are now only two members, and so what, what the town wants to do is have all those funds go directly to each municipality, uh, and then th they want to have a, a Chinese menu of what uh, you can get from LMC TV, you know, a, a premier package for a municipality and a standard package like we will order an HBO, and I think that you know there signal there is, hey, Village of Mamaroneck, you know, you're, you're televising your planning board and zoning board and, uh, you know, HCZMC meetings, and we're not. But to me, you know, that, that's just because you, you, you haven't taken the initiative to do that. And we've taken the initiative to have, you know, that be more open to the public. And, you know, 60% of the Village of Mamaroneck are town of Mamaroneck residents. So, you know, the, their community has wanted that too. And just because those 60% reside in the village of Mamaroneck, they are still town of Mamaroneck residents. So I, I would hope that my friends and colleagues in the town of Mamaroneck would realize that. Uh, and it's, it's not just all about dollars and cents, right? If it were, then, you know, we'd be in another business. Uh, government is always all about that. So what I would like to do and you know, of course, I'm, but I, I would like to revise the border control agreement and come back to them with ideas of our own and enter into uh, you know kind of a negotiation with them. Uh, you know, I, I, I all of you know I, I had sent an invitation to all of the town board members and my colleagues here that <clears throat> the ten of us would meet around the table and try and talk about it and get to know where everybody really is on this. And to have open discussions about this and have everybody, you know, have their voice heard and maybe, you know, come to a, a, a collegial and, uh, you know, professional manner of a decision, or at least know everybody's mind. Uh, but, you know, they, they you know, uh, decided to go a different path. Uh, so that, that's my history with this. That's where I am. And, you know, I'd, I'd like to know what my colleagues feel about this. I personally think it's sad just being in this community for so long and having LMC and especially I just don't know how it will work with our school district. That's the number one question, Mamaroneck School District, because you air their um, you air their uh, school board meetings, you record all like predominantly all their sports. Like, how does that work? And nobody like where's the input? Where is <laughs> so that that scare fair. It's a lot, yeah. and it's almost like emotional. I can't imagine what it is for you guys. Um, I would, but I don't, I don't see how this is possible. <laughs> I, I don't have any ideas right now, but I, I do believe that we need to keep it. That's one. Um, I'm hoping that may possibly the town of America could come back to the board, to the drawing board, and say that we do need to meet um, as a group, as uh, two boards. Um, I don't have any definite like ideas right now. Okay. And, and this, this isn't the last conversation we're going to have. Obviously, yes. I just, you know, but I, 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 I promised that I would approach the issue and I, and I am. Nora? Yes. Well, I mean, what's the mechanism to, for, for doing this? If, I mean, if there's, if, if Larchmont has opted out, 
um, there are now two entities left. If the if our board and the town and the Marinick board don't come to an agreement, what happens, or is there a provision for some sort of mediation of an agreement? Well, I, I from what I can see, and uh, Bob, you could look at the agreement, you know, and, and uh, come get back to us and see if I'm wrong. Uh, what I see is we're still in an agreement, in an agreement with the town of Mamaroneck. Mm -hmm. You know that they mm -hmm. have signatories to the agreement. The the agreement has a mechanism for leaving the agreement. Larchmont uh, exercised that mechanism and left the agreement. So that left two members in the agreement. Uh, it didn't, Larchmont leaving did not kill the agreement. Right, but I mean, but if the if, if the town of Marinick leaves and we don't wanna leave, well, is there still a mechanism? If the town of Marinick you know, wants to leave and doesn't wanna you know, go through a negotiation, they can, do the same as Lajmont did, where you have to give a year's notice. Uh, there's a certain point in the agreement, I believe, when it's required that you have to give a year's notice. There's like a, 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 a time, like I think it was November, you have to give a year's notice on November 28th, a very, but that's the only time you could do it. So they would have to give a year's notice in November 28th of 2023. Does their resources change dramatically? See that, that that's what we have discussion, right? I mean, because I I, 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 I kind of feel like this is when we there was a study to dissolve the town of Rye, but it they didn't include anybody else in the study, so it, like that it, it would have involved Belgium of Marinick, would have involved the town of Marinick. It didn't really work. Like, is there are we we're having this conversation now, but maybe it, it's going to be another seven months before the town makes a determination? Is no, there a way I, to work I out? Engage, I, want, I want to engage in a negotiation mm -hmm. with the town. Yeah, I, I, we should be figuring out how to solve the problem, yeah, not that's, figuring that, that's, out. That's, that's what you're saying. Right, I, I'm, I only talked about how determination work because you asked about it. Uh, so, because if we don't come to an agreement, what, uh, you know, what's, what is what's the worst case scenario? That's, that's the worst case scenario. scenario. I, I would think that that uh, that we're being too pessimistic. I mean, you, what you got from them was not a, 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 a an expressed intention to leave mm -hmm. the agreement. You got a proposal. Yes, exactly. So we can say, okay, we have your proposal. Uh, let's sit down, mm -hmm. all ten of us, and 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 see where we are. And uh, and uh, we they have a um, we have almost two years to, uh, to 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 deal with it. I think the board of uh, it's I liken it to the breakup of the uh, of uh, Yugoslavia. I mean, it's there's still there's still two not with the same result. No, you're hopefully not <laughs> with the same result. But there's still a rump state left there, and uh, and uh, so we 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 tell them let's 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 uh, work through the uh, through the uh, mechanism we have, and um, and if you if we we get to the point where you want to uh, withdraw, then that you're going to have to. Withdraw. You have to have to do that, but let's figure it out. Let's see if we can sit right. down around and figure so, it out. So, I, I think, time. right. It's, that's what I was getting at. You know, offer uh, a set of amendments to the current board of control agreement. I want to stay within the, the the stay within the confines of the board of control, but just uh, you know, amend it and modernize it. And you know, if, if they think that it's costing too much, talk about costs. Sure. Uh, but you know. It, I don't think it's fair to just say, oh, it's costing too much. We're going to get rid of it without yeah. thinking about you know, what are ways to mitigate that? Mm -hmm. you know, what, yeah. what are ways to, uh, I know Jerry's not happy hearing that. But. <laughs> I'm also not sure that the 10 of us are the only, I mean, I mean, obviously the 10, the, the two sets of boards have to make a determination, yeah. but I think there are other people who are in this room who have a lot more experience yes. in figuring out what, what the parameters should be. Well, I, I think, I, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it just, I mean, do we service the Rhinex School District? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. So is Rye a part of this too? No. no. The Rhinex, you know. Can we add them? Do they no. take out one? No, Rye has, I think they'd love to add them. <laughs> right, Rye has, Rye has, um, I think Rye has their own. Yeah, but it, it's like, you know, it, it. my comparison is, you know, Rye is Sandlot and they're the Yankees. <laughs> but there's a number of ways we could go we could we could shop for a new partner to replace large bond uh we uh, which which might include uh a, another municipality uh along the sound shore we could we could continue with just the two uh two uh participants we have now 
uh, we could, I guess, for want of a better term, take it private and 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 and, uh, and be the be the the sole, uh, uh, I guess, patron of of of, of LMC. At which point, I'd want to rename it. Uh, but um, uh, there's a number of ways we could we could go. I think we need to sit down with with the other participants and and uh, and uh, and hammer it out. And uh, and you know, I, I think the the main participants. If you talk about this 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 menu, I think you'd say, yeah, okay, that that menu that menu is for people who aren't part of the agreement. But if you're part of the agreement, you're taking you got the deluxe package because you're. Uh, you know, and and that's not that's not a question. That's that's the, you're you're agreeing to that up front. That that that's part, that would definitely be something I'd support as a negotiating position. Because that's also good government is that we're encouraging yeah. the tele, televised uh, uh, meetings. I mean, for one thing, uh, we found out that Larchmont uh, decided this in a work session that was not televised. Yeah. So that's why we didn't know about it ahead of time. No, nobody. So you know that that's. That runs counter to the whole good government, open government and, and, uh, uh, thrust behind what LMC is. And, and, and far be it from me to blow my own horn. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. But, uh, you know, <laughs> those meetings, land use board meetings are televised because I fought for two yeah. years to get them televised. Yes. And, uh, you know, that, that's a, a, an important legacy to me. And I think that the community has benefited and profited by it. I mean, I, I've learned a lot of things by people who said, hey, I was watching the land use board the other day. I was watching this board the other day. Uh, what do you know about that? And sometimes I'll just, you know, you'll be able to parachute in on, uh, on a meeting and, and, and listen. And uh, because that's, you know, you, you know, I'm, I'm home, I'm doing something else, but, um, you know, but the, the, uh, the planning commission is up on the, on the screen. It's, 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 a, it's really a remarkable uh, tool. And, uh, and I think we need to hang on to it. Manny? I'm just trying to like, as everybody's talking, I'm just trying to imagine what a com our communities would be like without LMC. I think it's something that's been around. Like I think about when my start is and how my involvement, I couldn't be at every board meeting. So my way to seeing was going online and watching it and just having it running in the background. So to think that, you know, other, the other, exactly the town of America would, you know, I don't think they're going to want to leave as Lou said, but that it's even being like considered is, is crazy to me. I just think we need to do whatever we can to kind of, not convince them, but help, help them understand what the meaning of it is and how important it is to our community and how the history of it has been within our community. I think that broadcasting meeting sports, I think that really gives you know the opportunity for everybody to kind of feel like they're participating within our government or in our community. I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, and I think that, I, I, and I hate to say this with the folks from LMC TV in the room because I don't want to scare them, but I, I honestly don't believe that LMC TV as the robust entity that it is now uh, would survive without us as partners. Uh, you know, it, I, I, I don't think uh, that relationship of customer client is gonna be enough to carry you through. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, what, I understand why it happened, but uh, it, it was kind of one of those, and, and this, this is exactly sometimes the problem with government. In 2010, you know, everything went to heck uh, with the housing market. Uh, the, uh, the communities were looking at, you know, uh, bad economic times. Let me just back up from its inception. Uh, the three boards, Largemont, Mamaric, and the town of Mamaric, never took any of the franchise fees. That money was always dedicated to LMC TV. Uh, 2009, the economy falls apart. Budget year 2010, uh, they decide to start taking money uh, from the franchise fees. So there's, there's two problems here is that, you know, the community started taking that money, which uh, lowered the available money. And quite frankly, as we all know, less people are signing up for basic cable and for cable TV. You know, they don't get money when people sign up for just the phone and the internet. Uh, there are no franchise fees. The franchise fees only apply to the purchase of cable television packages. So, you know, a lot of people are cutting the wire. Uh, young folks today, 
I don't know anybody under 40 who gets, does, you know, who gets cable anymore. Uh, you know, so there's a shrinking customer base that we, you know, have to be realistic about. But then there's also, you know, the municipalities, you know, it, to, to solve a short-term problem, damage the long-term institution. And that's what we have to be careful of as governments. You know, it, it's sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and, uh, you know, not, uh, as they say, eat the corn seed, right? So that there's nothing to plant the next year. Eat the seed corn. Uh, so I, I, would, it, would it be fair to say if I, if I were to write back the supervisor of the town of America tomorrow, that we, we are open to negotiations uh, about changing the board of control agreement. And we still would like, if the town could see the way clear, uh, uh, to meet as uh, a group to try and uh, you know, have frank and open discussions about this. Would yeah. you all be all right with that? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you know, let, let me just preface this by, this by saying, you know, I served on the Town of Amaric board uh, for a number of years, and they are good public servants and good people, and they're, they're, you know, we just see this issue a little differently from each other. And uh, you know, they, they definitely have the best interests of this community at heart, and they definitely want to do the right thing for everybody. But this is why you sit down together so that you could hear opposing points of view. And you know, maybe they'll say something that affects us and affects how we feel about the situation. But I think the dialogue is important to have because this is too important. And if we blow it, it's blown, right? And you, know, you, you can't put the, uh, you know, it, the, the egg back in the shell, right? So let's make sure we do it right. And it shouldn't just be done you know, via you know, emails between me and the supervisor of the town. Uh, and, as, as Nora pointed out, there are other stakeholders here. And those stakeholders should have a voice and they should hear the discussions and be able to you know, respond to the discussions because you know, we don't know everything, you know, uh, and I certainly don't. And uh, it, it would be interesting to have other people's you know, uh, input. You know, the, I, I look at the board of the, the members of uh, LMC TV board that are sitting here tonight. And you know, a lot of them have been on there a long, long time. Uh, and, uh, you know, Matt uh, was pretty much been, uh, since he was a young man working at LMC TV. You know, Mike Witch has been involved in uh, TV in this community since its inception. Can I tell the story, Mike? Pardon? Can I tell the story? Okay. <laughs> I always say to my kids, you would not be here if it was not for Mike Witch. When, when, when I went to Boston University, my children's mother, uh, was in the School of Communication, and she said she was inspired to go into the School of Communication because she had a teacher named Mike Witch. So as an 18-year-old kid from New York City, I heard that name in 1979. And lo and behold, Michael is still here inspiring young people uh, to get involved and to uh, nurture this. For my children, thank you, Mike. <laughs> For their existence. <laughs> I hope you had something to do with it also. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> uh, so that, that's what we're going to do. All right. We're, we're going to write our friends uh, at the town and tell them our feelings and then see what happens. And, and you know, and, and again, Tom, I, I think this was an initial reaction. A lot of, a lot of these, uh, they're, you know, they have the same fiduciary responsibility as we yes. do. Yes. And, and so they, they look at it, and, and sometimes you can look at it just in terms of money, but um, if this goes away, it'll be impossible to recreate yeah. uh, for any amount of money that we'd be willing to spend. So I, I think it's worth well, investing in now. You know, I think that we rely on LMC TV for meetings, and the town relies on it less for meetings, but I don't think that's really what the essence of LMC TV is. It's so while I think that our, the fact that our meetings are televised and the great variety of them are televised is significant, that's, you know, that's just one part of what LMC TV does for the entire community. And that, that's not coming out in this, in this discussion. Right, about the accessibility, the inclusion, the stories. 
the families like that is the most important thing i mean i think and our children like god i can't <laughs> i mean jerry uh, during covid and during the flood yeah, right. right how much do we lean on lmc tv yeah. so 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 covid covid's hard to remember because it was um really a, a significant event um and we had to do so many things so quickly in advance of what we thought were um, um were going to be impacts to our community but i can tell you that fema um is working well with us and providing us all sorts of reimbursement levels um, not seen in other communities because of the work that Matt and LMC and Dina provided us with documentation. Uh, we have documentation uh, that they told us that no other community has. So we're talking about millions of dollars, not hundreds of thousands. We're talking about millions of dollars. So, and, and launching that dro that dro the drone video of the flood was. I mean, I mean, I have a drone. I was afraid to launch it. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> so, you know, they say pitches, you know, as you yeah. well know, pitches worth a thousand words. Right? Pitches yeah. are, pitches words. Are all right. Uh, so that's what we'll do. Uh, I appreciate you all coming out tonight. Okay. Thank you. 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 Have a blessed evening. So far, so good. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Jeff, take care. So, Jeff, I can steal a good idea now. Pardon? I can steal a good idea now. You'll see. So, the, the, the judges are here for. Uh... Let me see what they have there. Uh, keep going. Let's go. Let's go to, back to the agenda. We're I, still in, go, going I, back up. Um, there are two items for tonight's meeting on the agenda, and there are eight items for next week's um, meeting on the agenda without the items that are not marked for the following meeting. Are you saying I'm meaning that like a new business? So, we have, so, so Nora, we have two items for the 13th tonight, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we have eight items for the 27th. Okay, okay. We're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna do the lightning round. Okay. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> review, I just wanna point out, uh, review of village code to include fair and affordable housing for all zones in the village. Uh, Trustee Lucas brought this up. So, and Laura, you wanna say something? Yeah, I do. It's, so the law didn't, well, it didn't, didn't it, it. it didn't make it to the back up on the agenda. So I think, I really think we should postpone it for two weeks yeah, but I have a specific question for for Bob and um you want to ask it now yeah I, well I asked it in an email but I, because it's a zoning change it's in the zoning code is it a zoning change and is it a type one action so maybe we can think about that for two weeks from now too yes for sure I will tell you just so you all know I will not be here two weeks from now okay uh, Mary will be here okay. in your new way okay uh, but she'll have been okay and I'll and I'll follow up with you on that exciting trip, Bob. Exciting trip. There you go. That's fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one is up for the 27th. Uh, building and Fire Code Administration. Do you need more time for that? Being held. Bob? I'm sorry? It's being held. I know it's being held until the 27th, but we're, we're doing the ones that are. So here, here's where we are. When you see this, you'll see it's a very extensive piece of legislation. I mean, I think it's 35 pages long. It has to conform to the state codes, the state regulations, and try to incorporate what the village has been doing. So uh, the building inspector and I met last week to go through it and talk about it. She's comfortable with it at this point. I want to put anything before you that she was not comfortable with. I have to do one more round through because there are a couple of things. There, there are a bunch of references I have to pick up to other parts of the code through there. Uh, if you like, I can give it to you to look at two weeks from now without me being here to talk about it, or I can wait until uh, March. Let's wait until March. Okay, we'll have you here. And just so you know, at Nikon last week, we learned they're working on the next revision. Yeah, you know. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's good. It's actually quite, it's actually going to be quite important. It's going to, it's going to anchor a lot of the other things I'd like to do to get the code process working. 
<laughs> Good. I'm glad you're happy with this test because it's a big one. Uh, First Amendment, that's for uh, the 27th. You know what? I, I, I talked to somebody uh, at uh, Westchester Municipal Officials the other night uh, about their, their cell tower agreement. And uh, frankly, they gave me the number of uh, somebody uh, who does uh, this kind of work uh, and they review agreements and if they can if they can get you more money, they uh, they take a cut of, with the revenue that they got you. So I, I just would wonder if the board would like to uh, explore that option uh, to see you know if th th he reviews the contract and uh, then uh, decides you know if it's worth looking at to you know if he doesn't if he doesn't if he says you're fine, he doesn't charge you anything. If he, you know, he gets a percentage of what he, the extra uh, money that he gets you. Uh, his name is uh, Fran Clerken. Uh, I'd like to, to have somebody reach out to him and ask him to review this. Would that be appropriate? Is that person also, can they also review like environmental? Um, I think they just uh, reviewed a contract itself. Yeah, I've, I've, actually, I've actually worked with Fran Clerken in other communities. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have. And uh, he's purely a financial guy. He has a database of all of these contracts around the country. Mm -hmm. He knows what all of these companies are making, what they're paying for their space on the on That's what we need. Yeah. That sort of thing. And so very successful in negotiating um, better rates. So, but financially, but, but are we also looking into the environmental piece? I think it's a separate issue. Well, just just on, on that, trustee, as you read, number one, this is an existing tower. Yes, so understand. In terms of the uh, visual impacts and those kinds of things, it's it's not likely to change. And the second point is that federal law severely restricts what the village can look at in terms of uh, these kinds of sites in terms of the environmental impacts of these kinds of sites. Say that again. <laughs> I'm a little confused yeah. of how we allow something to come into our community that we don't really have a say. So when it comes down to the environment. It, it, it's <laughs> called uh, the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution. Whatever, see, look at the, you know, <laughs> the, um, I, Explain that again, so, <laughs> but in, in more language. Okay, so there's two pieces. One has to do with permitting, one has to do with the site. The village is already leasing this site. There's no, the question here is whether to extend the site. There's 25 years left on the lease. The question is whether it should go to 60 years, something like that. 16 left on the lease, right? Like that. I can't remember the exact A lot of years left. There, there are years left in the So that decision, the village, at least as far as I can see, doesn't have any ability to terminate this lease. And, and our phones would be useless. <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> in terms of the regulation of cell towers and the thing people are concerned about, the, the electromagnetic radiation, mm -hmm. the federal government has taken that out of local government's hands. If they meet, if, if they certify that they meet the standards established by the Federal Communication Commission, the village can arrange it. Um, there's also been a lot of discussion, especially in New York City, about insurance and whether village municipalities are adequately insured for um, a future problem and whether these companies can mm -hmm. provide us with insurance. So it might be better for us to not necessarily get higher cash influx right now, but to be sure that down the road we're covered for anything that might happen. So I'm interested mm -hmm. in, in pursuing the insurance around this as well. Well, there are there are insurance provisions in the lease as it stands now, but those could be renegotiated as part of it. And I don't know whether that's something he does, if he just does the financial part or, or if he does the insurance portion too. Um, I think he could probably tell us what those provisions generally are. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, I just sent you, the, Jerry, I just sent you the gentleman's uh, email. That email, I'm sorry, phone number. And, 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 I'll, and I'll, I'll say that the the uh, the um, matter you brought up, uh, Lonnie, has been brought up in board meetings in 
other municipalities. Many, oh, oh, thousands of municipalities mm -hmm. nationwide. Uh, uh, you know, because we used to do these stories when I when I worked. I used to have uh, colleagues that did these stories. It always came down to that where they they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that uh, that uh, that part of the argument, and you're, they're precluding from uh, precluded from raising it. So I think the question because it's money. It's all about money all at the end of the day. Yeah, I know, but but it's just bigger than we can we we can deal with. So our issue is: Are we getting the best deal, and do we want to extend it? I think that's the only thing we can deal with at this point. And are we covered to the max? We're covered, sure. Possible for any. But, but, any but what you're talking about, you're you're you're, you're going to beat your head up against the wall on that. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> all right. One uh, e uh, partial property tax exemption for volunteer firefighters. And ambulance workers. One thing. Jerry, you want to explain this? Uh, Mayor, in December of uh, 2022, uh, Governor Hopel signed a, a law amending chapter, whatever chapter it was. Uh, basically, um, section 46, 466A of the real property bill. There you go. That's it. And it was on a tip of your tongue. It was on a tip of my tongue. <laughs> uh, so so it, it, it provides an option. Um, for local municipalities, school districts, and school districts in, in, in our case, um, to provide a, a tax exemption of up to 10% uh, for volunteer firefighters and ambulance workers. It basically, uh, provides an exemption for them on their assessed value, thereby shifting the um, assessed value a little bit. Towards and, and this doesn't cost us a lot, does it? it doesn't cost us anything. anything. But you know, as, as Jerry costs, points out, it, it, moving numbers. It, moving numbers. It costs us personally something. It costs those of us who are not Correct. worker uh, volunteers. Got it. Understood. And, and you heard from Chief Warren this evening how many volunteers we have. And, mm -hmm. and I would say we probably have a couple of dozen volunteer ambulance. Um, uh, I think the least we, in, our, in our community. The least we can do. Yeah, because and also we're trying to keep these men and women in the community so that uh, we don't have to hire. Uh, we don't have to outsource. Yeah. Outside. And, and I'm happy that ambulance workers are included. So that, that's that's good. good. Yeah, you know, MEMS, MEMS is an undersung resource here. I mean, I, those, those poor folks, they don't get enough credit. Uh, they don't get enough recognition. We should have a MEMS night here. Yeah. I because you know, if, if you've ever needed an ambulance and called them and you know they've come and they're, they're, they're smart and they're gracious and they're caring and they, you know, most of them are volunteers. Uh, and we, we were sitting in the back of the room, but, but Chris Bradbury uh, from, from Rochester, he had a great presentation. I've seen that presentation before. Yes. And he really has some very, very interesting information regarding you know, um, the need and, and the problem that the state has because it's not considered an essential service like police and fire. People would be shocked to know that we're not required. Right. We're not required to provide, to make sure that, that, that emergency, and, and, and which is just stunning to me. Yeah. Yeah. And, that would be a great idea. Thanks. Full disclosure, I have, uh, my youngest son is training to be an EMT. Yeah. God bless him. Good job. Yeah, he's a good boy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a local law, so that's what I pass it on to my friends. Yeah. Well, is everybody fine with uh, continuing yes. on the path with this? Yes. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Bob, two weeks good. Yeah, I think we've got it. We got it. All right. So put it on. It's here. It says scheduled public hearing for two weeks. It's all marked up. Right? That's a resolution. Yeah, there's more changes. I think you just have to reference both the assessors and the mayor. Okay. Yeah. So we can talk to Mary about that. Yeah. We're going to schedule schedule a public hearing on the twenty seventh. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. One uh, F establishing a designated reserve fund for supplemental income for volunteer firefighters injured in the line of duty. So sure. Mayor, last year uh, the board were kind enough and, and smart enough to set up a a fund for volunteer firefighters. Um, not very many people know, but when a volunteer firefighter um, is injured as a volunteer um, responding to a call or fire or an incident here in the village, um, they do not qualify for workman's compensation. They only qualify for a certain stipend 
for provision in the state law that gives them um, just over $400 per week. Individuals, even, um, even, even in, in more remote communities of um, New York State um, could not, uh, individuals could not you know, survive on $400 a week if they were, um, if they were injured in, in the line of duty responding to a fire or an incident. And so um, what we presented to the board and what the board approved was to create a special reserve fund in the event that um, individuals were uh, injured responding to a village in a Marinette fire, uh, that we would have um, a level in addition to whatever the state qualification is um, to compensate them and try to help them out during that time, period of time when they're out of work. Um, and so um, we haven't yet at the uh, fire department level, but we expect at fire council level to um, create some guidelines regarding this. Um, but in basic terms, we have discussed potentially just doubling what the state is for the period of time that the uh, individual is out, just to give them some further assistance. So it's very limited. From and, and this is match for, match what the state is giving. Match what the state. Yeah, and the state has three levels. So if you break your finger, you get twelve dollars a week. Um, if you hurt yourself significantly, you get four hundred and twenty-two dollars. And, and because the state's involved, I guess they would be in, in, in involved in making sure that this was, in fact, an, a long line of duty injury. So the approval from the state would initiate or would, would trigger the matching from, from the village funds. Okay. Right. Yeah. And most of our volunteer firefighters, uh, I, I wouldn't say exclusively, but the, the large majority work in the trades. Uh, they work in you know government DPW areas like that, where you can't you know, sit at home with a broken arm and still log in to work. Mm -hmm. So you have a couple of IT professionals and things of that nature that, that with a broken arm or a broken hand or something along those lines. But you know, we're also talking about a burning building and fires and, and yeah. talking about some severe, severe injuries that uh, I don't uh, think the state provides enough, but that's, you know, that's not our problem. In health. And also if it's, if it's many of our firefighters are village employees, but because they're not doing a village job when they're fighting a fire. They they don't qualify for the regular comp. Regular no. comp. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. It would be it would be better if they got hurt while they were doing their village. Okay. That's that was a, the, my, my concern always is, is that somebody gets hurt, uh, you know, and then says I got hurt on the job when they've got hurt at home playing with the cat. You know? Yeah, no, but but, but here it's actually responding to a fire, they would not qualify for it. You know, mm -hmm. that. So um <clears throat> So this would set aside because we haven't had, um, and we were, we've been fortunate enough uh, last year not to have any injuries. This would set aside that hundred thousand dollars in the event that um, something happened. Individuals, yeah, would would be uh, so be a, a reserve fund. And it's I assume it's in a fund that's interest bearing, and wait, that's an Augie question. And then well, Augie gets the interest, Nora. Augie gets the interest, yeah. <laughs> and then it just gets <laughs> replenished if need be. But there's always a. It would be a it would be a fund set aside in the budget, and if we need to replenish it, the board of trustees would replenish it. It would be but, part of the operating budget. It would be part of the operating budget. Oh, so by annually. okay, so this was an annual. This was this was in the operating budget last year. Okay, but we didn't fund it. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't use, use it. So we're setting it aside. Okay, it so if it dips below a certain so level, basically, so it's not going to be in the operating budget, but because we will have this set aside. We won't be adding $100,000 to this fund every year is the question. I think, I think we probably should have that conversation during budget season, mm -hmm. but uh, um, it would be up to the board to make that decision at budget season, whether they fund it again with additional 100 or smaller amount or not at all, and then create some kind of a policy of, you know, of a cap, right? You know, fund it if it... So the fact that it wasn't used, it's good. It's good, but it, it, we have to set aside this money um, to um, to have it in the future in the event that we have. You need to be ready. You need to be ready. Right. Lilani, you try to say? No, similar to what she was asking. So okay. uh, everybody else okay with this? Great. Yep. Manny? Yep. Great. Uh, traffic commission. Yay. Traffic Commission recommendations for February 27th. Rescind 
no parking restriction on the north side of Stewart between South Barry and Guy. So we're going to take all the parking away from the north side of Stewart? We're going to restore it. We're going to restore it. Oh, we're still no parking. Yeah. Ah. Right. Yes. Why are we, what, because so. I can. The, I, I drive there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the so it's, it's been before you. All the remediation is of the gas station, yeah. which is now the 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 emergency medical place. Yeah. That there was no parking there because there was equipment that was checking wells, mm -hmm. and that equipment's been gone for quite a long time. But the parking was never replenished. And the residents there like it to be yeah. come back because yeah. they need it. But those are parking right? No, well, it's, it's, it's residential. It's, 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 single, it's single family homes on that section of the uh, It's by the bridge, right? The, the bridge over the uh, before, waterway? No. Yeah, before, before, the, it's before the bridge. It's, yeah. But it's people, who, people who like to fish off the bridge. No, no, no. no, 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 no it's, it's before that. Two houses after the um, emergency medical facility. I, I think it's a good idea. And you turn right, and it's right there. Right. I think the people that live over there are kind and loyal people who work hard for this community. All right, Augie? Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, um, the apartments there, the apartments there have garages and overflow parking. So there's, there isn't much in the way of park. It's not like the Santa Moore Road, 151 Santa Moore Road situation. Yeah, I, I, I get a resident, and this is you know tangential to this, but I get a resident uh, and I was, over her house and she lives on South Barry and her sump pump hole still gets a sheen, like a sheen of oil, right? And she's called, uh, whatever it was, company, Exxon, who was it? Exxon, Exxon. 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 It's the people who brought you the Valdez. And uh, they say it's not them, but I, it's hard to believe it's it's down the block. <laughs> what, yeah, right. How many exactly. gas stations did you have there, yeah, right? Exactly. Just, just that one. And the, right, she, yeah. she, I think that they closed the they closed the remediation, uh, but she still has problems. I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna send that to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, removal of parking spaces on Mount Pleasant Avenue to enhance sight visibility in the vicinity of the intersection with Stanley Avenue. So this would be where the graveyard is there? And uh, actually, it's the other side. I think it's the uh, uh, the uh, bodega. Uh, no, stay on. There's parking in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is just to remove uh, one space on, I can see the either side just to enhance the visibility for the traffic that's exiting. Uh, uh, Stanley going on to Mount Pleasant. Make it a right on the map, was it? Well, both actually. Yeah, right the right on the left. It's oh, so it's taking parking on both sides. Yeah. yeah. So it'll, it'll make it uh, easier for the uh, voters to uh, yeah, see I, what's I, going on because we've had a couple of, uh, see, there was at least one accident there. I, I understand it, but I'll tell you, for someone who's spent a lot of time in apartments in the village of Mimaric, uh and uh, even, you know, not the place I have now, but other places that, you know, you had on street parking. Uh, was your only alternative? We're making it harder and harder to park in this area. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, well. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not gonna, but I'm just saying we, we have to keep that in mind. No, no, I think that a meeting has gone by where the traffic commission has in essence removed some parking spaces. So, so, so I think it's, wow. it's the yeah. prevalence of TVs, giant vehicles. Yeah, that, I can see that. That's what it is. It's, it's, so can you make it like an area just for compact cars? Like, is, does that make? Yeah. It's difficult to enforce right. not that car parking. That's true, because I try to say right. yeah, <laughs> the definition of compact car is up. Well, the way you do is you, you take the box. If you can fit in the box, you yeah. don't get a ticket. If you don't fit in the box, you, you get ticketed for parking outside the lines. Yeah, unless there's somebody out there with a pan, can of paint. You know, no, it's it's a, 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 all, the, all the photographs that we received from these complaints in that, in that area, or, yeah, it, we, where, where I live over on Richville, uh, the driveway that leads to the parking area, a uh, gentleman had an SUV and he had the front spot that goes right by the sidewalk. And the other night, uh, the, the fire department had to get in and it was very difficult. And they actually had to get Mike Iannuzzi, who's a professional, but one of our volunteers, 
and he, because he, you know, he does this every day, he slowly got the truck in, but you know, they said to the management company, that car can't be there anymore. Yeah, it's too big. Yeah, so. Right. Done, right? So it's on for the regular. Is, there, is everybody all right with putting that on? Absolutely. Yep. For next week? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be good. Mm -hmm. Fire department presentation. F and G are for tonight. Okay, give me a second. Uh, adoption of 23-24 capital budget plan for where we're we, we, we now. Wait, I thought uh, we had an H. The work, what happened to H? H I J. We're going no, we're going through stuff that happened. You're pay attention. Right. Really? Tom's trying to get stuff that's going to be stuff that's on, on for tonight. tonight. Oh, got it, got it, got it. All right, come on. Don't make it. Don't make it. Jesus. Uh, adoption of capital plan uh, for February 13th. So we 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 had a meeting. Uh, when the heck was it? January 30th. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a meeting January 30th, and uh, the board. Uh, move to put this on the agenda for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, is there anything new or additions? Or? Priorities? Uh, the, the department, um, when the board discussed with the department heads, um, the resolution has the two yeah. most important items. Yeah, they've all submitted the, 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 sure the on there. Um, and then a, a current, a current um, not in the resolution because it fluctuates, but at current levels, um, because we are double A plus, uh, every million dollar that you borrow is ninety thousand dollars in principal and interest for every million dollar. Say that again. For every million dollars you bond, you pay ninety thousand dollars in principal and interest payments. Pay that off per year. And that goes into the operating budget. So that is is that dependent upon the term of the bond and also interest rates. Only what's the common term of the bond? Assuming 20% a 20-year bond at two and three quarter percent. That assumption. What were we borrowing a couple of years ago? Right? Oh, less than one percent. Less than one percent. Now we're close to four. So it could be higher. That amount, than that number. That's, that's a conservative paid. number, 90,000. That's a conservative number, okay. And are we bonding for 20 years vehicles? I mean, how, I mean. When we go out to bond, our financial advisor and our bond attorney tells us what's the PPU, the prior probable usefulness of that item. And that's legally what you could bond for. So we're not bonding. So some of the items on this, we can't bond, right? For. Some, so items, some items have a certain number of years by law mm -hmm. right terms. So but when we go out to bond, we bond in an aggregate. We go out for one sale. But it's more than one bond. It's, because the bonds have to match what item we're actually purchasing. Yeah, we'll come to you with anywhere between five or six, six different bonds. Or yeah. Right, no, put I together know. and they're separated by the period of probable usefulness for each item. There's a lot of paperwork when we vote on those yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, I'm concerned that it's an awful lot of money over five years and that we don't really know what the impact on our operating budget is going to be. And it's that, so it's more of a, it's still not a capital, it's a capital plan and kind of a capital wish list, but it's not a budget because when we get to the resolution, which is the regular agenda, it doesn't have like an amount tied to it. So I still, I feel like we're, um, what's the alternative? Well, we, did, we did prepare the resolution in a fashion that's the final resolve clause says something to the effect that um, we can, this is really to start the implementation process. But if there is author funding authorization required, we have to come back to the board for that. The, the, right. the, the, it, it, uh, to me, this is a process of you know assessing the community's needs, recognizing the community's needs, but you know, it doesn't lock you in to you know. I mean, listen, God forbid something cataclysmic happens, 
you know, you know, when it wipes out all reserves and uh, taxes need to go up 20%, you know, the things are gonna have to wait, right? I and mean, we all know that. So this doesn't lock you in to those purchases. This locks you into a plan that uh, hopefully will allow you to then implement, you know, strategies to, to pay for this stuff. Is, yeah. is that? Yeah. What locks us in is when we say, you as in the board, you are authorized to do this project you are authorized to fund this project with this money. And I, and I know what I know what Nora is saying. It's not, it, you know, if it doesn't have numbers, it's not a budget. It's a capital plan. Yeah. It's not a budget. Well, and the other thing is, and this is, I'm just speaking like, if it's, we're borrowing a million dollars and conservatively, that's going to add $90,000 to our operating budget. That's $90,000 we don't have to spend on something else that's currently in our operating budget. So I feel as though, you know, on the one hand, yes, there are things that we need to do, and there are things that we want to do, and there are th and we can afford to bond a lot in terms. But well, shouldn't say that we have the capacity. We'll be approved for bonding a lot. Mm -hmm. But just because you have a twenty thousand dollar limit on your credit card doesn't mean you actually can spend that 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 amount of money because you have to be able to pay it back. Yeah. We pay it back in our operating budget. I, I understand what you're saying and, and, and I have the same impulse that or uh, and but I think when I look at this and I try to try to imagine the the um the solution, it's an equation with far too many variables and unknowns to be able to get where we'd like to be and we'll make it a budget. You just can't do it because you don't know what's going to happen. So I think I think it's it's yeah it's a wish list wish list. But I don't know how what else we could do. I don't know how you get around it. But, so we jump in here, but let me point this out. Frankly, every budget that we create every year is a wish list. And we have to sometimes move money around. We have to sometimes take uh, from this line, put it to that line. Budgeting at its best is guesswork. Uh, you know, it, we the the idea is that you don't go over, you know, the the number that you had. Uh, because you know it would go over the tax rate, and you, you guess at the tax rate, you guess at what your expenses are going to be. You hope it doesn't snow. You hope it doesn't flood, and you you make the best choices you can. Uh, you know we've been working on this capital plan for years, and part of why it didn't come to fruition was because we tried to get too specific. So we didn't have you know a capital plan budget because you know, we, we would. You know, we, we were trying to find out, you know, what, what was going to be the cost of lumber on the docks, uh, right? When you can't even predict that anymore, because what, what something cost, as we found out from the gentleman uh, from the fire department, what something cost last year is 25% more expensive now. So I think your concerns, I understand, but, you know, we, we deal with them when we approve the projects. Right now, we're really approving you know, the priorities for those projects. Yeah. I, I understand that. But last year, we also approved a budget. And then the next week, we started dipping into the reserve fund for stuff that we hadn't put in our budget. So we didn't, you know, we didn't hear the tax cap, but we just spent a lot of money month after month after month after month that we hadn't anticipated buying, just taking spending coming out of the reserve fund. And my point is, we are... We have a very big capital plan, a, spend, a capital spending plan that conservatively, it's, it's like $110 million. Some of it's grant money, some of it's gonna be reimbursable. But for every million we spend, if we bond it conservatively, that's $90,000 that's gonna come out of an operating budget down the road. So I think that's, that's kind of, to me, a recipe to acknowledge, acknowledging that we're going to be raising taxes to be able to cover those operating funds. And so I, that's, that's, I, that's. But an, agree, an ingredient in that recipe is that you're paying off items as well. Mm -hmm. Bonded years ago. Yeah, stuff that rolls out. 15 years but ago. what's our average bond for the past 10 years? We haven't, we haven't bonded $20 million in a year in the sure, past just, 10 we, years. We built the firehouse. Uh, we built. What if we? I mean, what's so? I well, think. Asked, so giving, well, but, uh, we but, built the firehouse. We bonded for the uh, library. Both of those were at the time. Uh, library was like sixteen million dollars. The firehouse was over twenty million dollars. Right, but the library. The library is a separate taxing district. But it's, it's, not, it's on district. our bond. I understand it's on our bonding, but it's not. But it's not our village taxes right. that's paying it off 
like the firehouse was, but I think that, you know, that would be a good comparison. What, with this projected plan, what increased bonding debt that's gonna affect our operating budget? You know, what's the difference between what, we, what we've done for the past 10 or 15 years? Is it different? Have we, been, have we been spending this much and still being able to increase our reserve fund? Well, then that's okay. But if we haven't been, I think we need to anticipate that and be transparent about it. That's all. Well, I just want to point out, no one has been untransparent about the budget process or about how, how we work here. You know, yes, things had to come out of the reserve fund uh, different times, but at the end of each year, the reserve fund was more than it was at the beginning of that year. It, it's worked. It, it, it's worked. I don't, I don't. I'm, I, 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 I acknowledge that. I, okay, I know, but I'm, I'm, so let me finish it, please, Laura. You know, so I think what we have to really decide is we've got to be a community that slowly crumbles uh, because we are afraid that we might someday have to raise taxes. And I've been on these boards since 2001, and it hasn't been a year where taxes haven't been raised on any board that I was on. There's never been a decrease in taxes. Uh, boards have always raised taxes. Uh, this board in the past, I don't know, seven or eight years has not gone over the tax cap. Uh, it, it had, I know it hasn't since you and I have been on it, Nora. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, under the previous board, it didn't go over uh, the majority of the time, maybe once or twice they did. But my memory doesn't serve me that well. So mm -hmm. this community has, you know, kept under the tax cap kept taxes as low as we possibly can. But I think what we really have to be transparent with is to tell our residents that we have a crumbling infrastructure. Uh, we, we have uh, sewers uh, that were built uh, before your great grandmother was alive. Uh, you know, we have a, a water system that's ancient. You know, we have parks that uh, you know, are, are in desperate need of repair. And we have a village hall here that's been barely functioning for 30 years. And- On you know, top of all the vehicles that need to be- On top of the vehicles, on top of uh, street paving that has to be done. So, you know, it, it's, I, I understand being budget conscious, but I also really, I, I sat here and uh, watched us delay and kick the can down the road. Uh, and, you know, to, with, with the idea that oh, we're doing a capital budget and here it is in front of us. Uh, so, you know, we, we have worked through it. We have something that's workable. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can move this forward and hopefully, you know, put this part of it to bed so we can work on something else. And I understand the anxiety there. But um, uh, I think, frankly, the collective anxiety of the past decade, uh, Pat, of the past, the, the village, from my point of view, squandered a decade of, of low interest rates by by reacting to fear and not and not taking advantage of it. In other words, there was free money, there was uh, there was interest-free money available for, for years, and they didn't they, they never acted on it. Um, uh, we can't we can not do some of this stuff, but as we go forward, we need to be focused on alternate uh, streams of revenue and uh, and what we absolutely need to do. And 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 I don't think taxes always have to go up. I don't think they do. Uh, I think if we're smart. Uh, we can we can uh, we can do some of these things without uh, without the usual without treating uh, tax uh, revenues as a as a as a constant when in fact they can be a variable if we are imaginative enough. I also think that at some point we need to trust the people, <laughs> trust our village and the village staff, the, the people in the various di different departments who know how tight things can be in their own their own departments. Like they're not gonna just put up something that, you know, is just something that they don't need. It's they're, they're literally giving us their needs. And the one thing I was told when I was young, there's a difference between our wants and our needs and our wants need to be handled and handled carefully. And if we don't trust our clerk, if we don't trust our manager, if we don't trust our lawyers, we don't trust the people that are actually doing the job in which apparently have won awards and things like that with your concerns that's and that's our part that's that's our part what we're supposed to do is um recognize maybe some gaps in the system but i keep saying like think the things need to be done and we're going to do it being careful and being mindful and not just put everything up without 
in my poor bar budget. I, I, I just don't know how what the alternative is. I really don't. I mean, I, I you can't, and if we can't see the future and 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 put numbers on some of these these variable uh, variables in the equation, it's impossible to accomplish. I think what what you want to accomplish. Do you have a fear? I'm sorry. No, I'm, just I, don't a question a, I don't have a fear. fear. I don't have a fear. I, 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 we have a fiduciary responsibility yes. as village trustees. Mm -hmm. I am interested in knowing how different this, this um, debt path we're taking is from the, the debt that's been incurred for mm -hmm. the last five or 10 years. There's a capacity to accomplish these projects. There's a capacity to bond the projects, but we have to pay for the principal and interest from our operating budget. Mm -hmm. And there will be some debt rolling off, but probably not the amount of debt that we're incurring because what was borrowed was borrowed at a lower interest rate. And I think in general, we, we've done fewer projects in the past 10 years. So I'm not saying not to do it. Okay. I'm saying what is the impact to the operating budget with, you know, we're gonna borrow X amount of money if we even ask, we, there's a conservative estimate, there's a not conservative estimate. What's the impact? You know, when you bond next year, it kicks in the year after. What's what's going to be the impact in year two, three, four, five, six from now? And we talked about a 10-year capital spending plan, um, and it's a plan. It's not a capital spending budget. It's not mm -hmm. so we're not adopting mm -hmm. a budget. It's a plan. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a list of things we want to do. What, some of these things like Village Hall are going to be started, but they're going to roll over so that there's going to be more spending in years six, seven, eight, nine. It's not like we have this, this list and in, in five years, we're going to stop spending. We're still going to have projects to do. So my question is, and I, this was my question on the 30th as well, what is, what's going to be the impact on our operating budget in the future years. That's just a question mm -hmm. that I have. And I think it depends. Mm -hmm. The answer is it depends on what we do. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think to your point about Village Hall, six, seven, or eight years from now, the majority of us are, are not going to be here. That That's going to be a decision of a new mayor and the majority of a new board. But we might still be paying taxes. And, okay. I know, I'm just going to finish, please, Laura. Sorry. And, and, and they are going to have to assess whether spending that money fits in with their budget. We're not locking anybody in here. We're not locking future boards in. This is a board in 2023 that's saying, this was our vision in 2023. Doesn't handcuff you in 2030. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll mention, we talked about the new village hall and I made it clear that my priority in the new village hall is a new police station. One that, I, that, we've done the, one that we don't all have to be ashamed of uh, first. First and foremost, this part of it, if it has to wait, it can wait. I mean, you know, this this room is you know, it's, it's not very nice, but it, we'll, we'll live with it uh, if we have to. And, and we we could we could prioritize how that goes along. So, um, uh, but but that's how you. I think that's how we do it. I mean, I I know I know what I I want, um, uh, but I'm only one vote. You know, so it, it's going to be our collective will and our, our collective decisions that and, and, and each decision will affect all the others. So so we can't answer all those fill in a, a number for all those uh, th those uh, variables in one one swoop. It's just not possible. I mean, we, we do know a number. We know that for every million dollars, it costs ninety thousand dollars approximately not. So you, you can you can plug in the numbers there. But, you know, you, I don't I don't think that it's fair to ask for a specific Specificity, I always mess that word, uh, specific numbers on projects. Specificity. Because, you know, it, 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 how many times I read this? Uh, I don't know. So, Especially with inflation. It, it, it's, it's, it's on for tonight. Is, is, everybody, the, is there a consensus to vote on it tonight? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and then, I understand, you know, and, and Paul, you, could you, could you, what's a, a schedule? of uh, what debt is retiring? The answer is yes, okay. but it's also, it, it's gonna vary. I don't know what projects, you might approve this plan, but it's just a plan. In this year, I don't know what projects the boards are gonna actually approve. No, no, no. We took a majority on every project. That, that's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking going forward, I'm asking looking back. 
what's coming off the books this what year. year. So what's what's rolling, rolling on? So happy to be first thing yeah. in the morning. I have that. 2023, this is coming on. 2024, that's coming on. 2025, that's coming on. I think that might you know, help alleviate some of the noise. I think, noise I think concerns. Concerns. it would help all of us because I think I think what Nora's saying makes it's sense. Valid, yeah. it, 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 believe me, it, I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, how can we how can we possibly know what know, know this? We can't. The answer is we can't. Sadly, we can't. Right. Oh, we're going to get to any of my stuff or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, have a budget. Memorial Day Parade. Everybody's fine with having Memorial Day Parade. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Uh, Matt, I didn't hear you. Oh, yes. yeah, I'm fine. What'd you say? You said yes. Memorial Day Parade. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's the closest truth. <laughs> I don't think we need a substantive discussion on Memorial Day Parade. <laughs> It's March, it's no, it's May 30th. Yeah, yeah May 30th. Okay. And we are one of the few communities that still has a Memorial Day parade. Blessings. And, and on May 30th. Okay. Wait a, this, I just want to point this out. Point it this out. happened when I was on the board years ago, and it was the result of work of a, of a person I was always at loggerheads with. I got to give him credit. Uh, Trustee Joe Angeletta was the one who brought the, the uh, Memorial Day parade back to the village of America. John. Joletta, there you go. Angela, 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 Joseph, Angela. Okay. Wait, what are you saying? Other communities don't have every community that I've worked in or lived in has a memorial. I think you meant on the thirtieth. On the thirtieth. Oh, on the thirtieth. That's fine. We said, "What are you talking about?" What are you talking about? There was a long time we didn't have. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. trust the Angela. Yeah. Uh, so you never worked in Curious Joel then. <laughs> Jamala. <laughs> uh, decommissioning. Decommissioning of police vehicles. Yes. Yep. Yeah, we'll just explain this a little bit. So uh, it's a police vehicle that has reached the end of its useful life. Uh, and we uh, put them out to auction. And the board just needs to make a declaration that it's surplus and authorize us to put on auctions internationally. And then we'll get a good price. Good man. Uh, everybody's fine with that? Yes. Um, Jay. Fiscal year 2023 for budget count is, uh, let's look at this for a second. Uh, does everybody have their pocket calendars up? Yeah. No. I have an ask. Give me one second, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, please do me a favor, folks. Open up your calendars and see if you have any major. Or what thing? We got to look at the calendar. Yeah, you, it's, it's on your. <laughs> uh, two I. Yeah, hey, Lou, you look at mine. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> That calendar. I know. I, I, I'm looking. I'm looking I'm looking. I gotta tell you what's on my calendar. Jerry, what did you say? You were, you were gonna say something, Jerry. March 29th. Yeah. To extend that meeting to nine o'clock. Why? Because it's revenue expensive. What we would do is we would discuss um, the office of the court initially, and then once you complete that, we spend a significant amount of time on the 29th to talk about revenue and expenses. There are going to be a slew of new revenue items that are coming in. Proposed new revenue. Proposed new revenue items and some expenses that have dropped off significantly. Help us with the budget. Expenses that dropped off significantly. CSEA salaries. Excuse me. Okay. Um, Need time to explain this. Or you said so? No, I think it's, I mean, I think it's fine. I think, I guess my suggestion would be is if we have, there may be some um, conflicts for trustee liaison meetings and maybe we just try and postpone them that month. Until 7 tomorrow? Yeah. Is that, the 29th. Well, I, I mean, I'm not looking at the village. I'm looking at my calendar, not the village calendar. Yeah. But I think maybe that would be the easiest way of doing it. So it's, it's not a different, no, so nobody has to set up, just delay the meeting a half hour. Mm -hmm. So the, the, hold on, April, yeah, that's fine with me, but on April 10th, 
It's the day after it's Easter Monday. That's it's Easter Monday, but we have a water season. Okay. We should, yeah. We yeah, should. We should. Oh, yeah, my, it says it on my schedule. So I'm married to an English woman now. Well, let's look at the village calendar. So for April, what? Hey, April Sally? 10th, April 10th, there's a meeting. Yes, Mayor. Sally, April 10th is a regular board meeting, right? I can confirm in just a second. All right. On the calendar on your website. Yes. Okay, April 10th is a regular board meeting, so, so that's not going to work. So we can do... We can do the third, um, April third, as long as you allow me to zoom in. Um, who is who is that? And that's it. April third's fine. I have done. you lost. Is everybody okay no. with April third? So instead, it's introducing April third. No, that instead of the tenth. The tenth. Okay, okay. Thank you. It's April third, and that's uh. It's a non BOT Monday work session. Yes, it's Arts right. Council, but I'll, I'll ask them to meet a half hour late. Okay. And we're at what? What is this for again? This is the budget. We, we so for, for those time. for those uh, five thirty. Uh, for those who are new, uh, every department comes, and they you know they present their like they did before. What? Like they just did before. No, but this this is they come and they 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 just talk about their budget. They talk about what the department does. Why they need increases here. Why they can. Yeah, and it's a little uh, kind of a an, an ability for the uh, staff to highlight what they do too. Right. Busy month, April. Yeah, April And April eleventh is another one. April eleventh is another one. Twelfth is another one. April thirteenth is a little front end alert. All 530. You know what? I'd rather do that. Let's just knock uh, them out. Ruin a week. Let's just ruin a week. And plus, if we have to do something, that gives us time. If we have to add something extra, to add something extra. On the 11th, I might be a little late because it was just a general waterworks, but not that much late. If we have to add something, we can add it on the 17th. Use that as a, uh, use it, use it a catch all. Okay. So we should pencil that one in. Could you all old school? Oh, yeah, I've got it. I have to. I'll be all jacked up if I don't. <laughs> so, so, so the March 29th, we used to do revenue and expense at the end. We, we switched last year to do it mm -hmm. in the beginning. Like, I think it's better, don't you? Yeah, it's better. Much better. Will you have the information? I have the information. We might have it uh, the end of this week. Already. The numbers are coming from the state? On certain items. Okay, does anybody have any conflicts that they're not mentioning? No. No. No, are you okay with those? Yeah. One. Yeah. As far as I can tell. If they're like, uh, if, like a, with Nora and the. It's a just account. Yeah, if there's like a, a committee meeting, I just have to double check. Right, just yeah, but these are over by 7.30, so if the committee meets yeah. at 7.30. Normally they go to 7 o'clock, right? 7.30. 7.30. But I just, I want to, like, ours council's at 7, and we'll, we'll just ask them to go to 7.30. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, Sally, would you please, you don't have to answer, but just please add those to my calendar. Yeah. Great. And we'll use April 17th as a maybe mm -hmm. if needed. Should we put that maybe. on the village calendar as a reserved? Yep, reserved. Yep. All right, let's just go on to the next item. Okay. Uh, design and engineering service for sanitary sewer replacement for Grove, Hill Street, and Carroll Avenue, okay. subject of a public health emergency declaration. As many of you on the board know, um, we've been doing the investigative work for the next three metered areas and final three meter metered areas to satisfy our order of consent. Uh, when we were doing the investigation, um, the, um, the streets and locations that the managers are in um, significant dis disrepair. In fact, so much so that the um, consultant that we're working with, Arcadis, said that they should be um, 
they should be completed even before some of the other stuff in the other metered areas that we're working on now. Mm -hmm. So in order to um, expedite the process and use our current contractor, uh, I declared an emergency, public health and safety emergency for those areas so that we can uh, address those areas. And before you is the um, anticipated costs for those areas. So I'll pull it up. And you think that this will uh, greatly alleviate the issue? This will alleviate the issue. Um, this has to be pushed up. And can, can, uh, can, I mean, I think it's worth saying that if, even though it's being done on an emergency basis, the cost is the same as if it were being done on a non-emergency basis. It is, it's yeah. just you're putting it into a different yeah. time frame. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically dictating that these areas have to be done first before the rest of seven, nine, and 10 mm -hmm. are completed. That's but they would be doing, I mean, at, are you, do we still have to, we don't have to negotiate a different contract with Keller Sessions. This is part of right. what we've it's already part said. Of their, right. right. So it's we're not, well, often when we do an emergency, it costs more money. This is a situation in which the emergency is just reshuffling of priorities, not a reshuffling of expenses. Except there are two advantages to it. That when we have Department of Health, Department of Health review helps when there's an emergency mm -hmm. shown by the by the engineers, Arcadis and Kelly Sessions, that this could potentially impact, you know, the sanitary mm -hmm. right, usage of the properties in this area. Um, and the second thing is that it um, moves all of the items that are on seven, nine, and ten up to the top of the list. So we get these done first. As far as the cost, the cost is the same. And as far as the construction management, that's handled by our office now. That's handled by the um, engineer's office. So those costs uh, don't, don't no longer exist. So this would be uh, 32, I think, right? right? It's about uh, 45, 46 with the uh, survey. Oh, with the Spinelli? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Uh, transfer station. You want this one? You want me to do it? Well, I have it out. Somebody? I got it. Transfer station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, basically some additional uh, work. The uh, uh, since we're not uh, doing a, a heating system in the in the transfer station, we need to revise a bit of the architectural work. There's a proposal from Studio Architecture for ten thousand nine hundred, and then uh, some additional surveying work, which is about two thousand. So uh, all told, is about thirteen thousand dollars to. Uh, Revised design services. What about the solar panels? Um, the, 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 build, the building will have the ability to yeah. handle solar panels. Well, then, then I think we should, uh, you know, say yeah, you let's do it now. Right? That, 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 I mean, that, that, that's well. The thing we skipped over was a policy that we'll put put solar panels on all our roofs whenever we work on them. Well, that gets on the regular meeting. Yeah, that was at the at the budget meeting. You said you wanted a mm -hmm. resolution for tonight's regular meeting. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, okay. okay. All right. So, so, uh, so, okay. So this would include uh, solar panels. So it doesn't include the solar panels. The structure can handle solar panels. We don't have a, we don't have an agreement with the solar panel company or anything of that nature yet. And can we do that before we do the work? We have to build the building, and then we can just add solar panels to the building. If you don't have a building, you don't have you don't have. Oh, a I got it. So this, this is not just a roof; it's a whole building, or it's a whole building. Right? Okay, got it. Understood. So we're going right. down in price on the building. We're not putting heat in the building, and we're not putting those fast doors. Understood. Under okay, because uh, it says roof. That's why um, my mistake. So the cost of the building is actually going to be less than what we originally anticipated. Oh, there you go. But there's some changes in the design that we have to make. All right. Thank you. Just so a whole truck rolls in. The whole truck will skin and dumps. Wow. <laughs> and then at night, maybe three, four pieces of equipment are stored inside there when it's not in use. Oh, really? Yeah. That are, that are currently stored outside. Correct. They're outside. Yes. Excellent. Good. And, it, and it's 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 higher than like 
So very hot. Yeah. So the last time you got flooded down there, so many uh, sanitation trucks got flooded, right? Yeah, but those were the ones that were at street level. Yeah, so maybe just a little higher. Yeah. Maybe help of uh, God will save us. Okay. Let's go back to the old business and see what we haven't done yet. Okay, one more. Oh, where is it? L. 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 A professional service services. agreement to provide engineering and service for uh, Olstead Avenue safety improvements. Uh, we just got the authorization from um, the state DOT to right. proceed to preliminary design. Uh, what we have attached is an agreement with uh, HPEA. Uh, they were the vendor that we selected to uh, provide the professional engineering design services. Uh, so this allows us to spend money and get reimbursed. Okay. Have I found that? Yep. yep. Getting reimbursed always sounds good. Uh, let's go to 1H, uh, resuming village operation of housing choice voucher program. Jerry, you, you put this on? In there. Um, Several years ago, as you remember, we um, started mandating the um, construction of affordable units uh, amongst market rate units. Um, we have a couple of builders who have either completed their project or very close to completing their project, who have been trying to get the town to get um, individuals who qualify for the affordable units. And because of the, some shifting in the town personnel, uh, loss of town uh, um, employee, uh, they have not been able to do so. And so I think it's best if um, we take it over so that we can handle the administration of that. We don't necessarily choose the individual that's done by a third party, um, but they are vetted by a third party and then they're chosen into a lottery system by a third party. But we would be administering that just to make sure that it's going um, the way it's supposed to, because right now it is ground to a halt no. because there's some changes at the town level. When I was a trustee on the board when we, we had a housing person, mm -hmm. right? And we dissolved that and let the town uh, take it over because it was it was saving uh, a part-time salary. Would you anticipate that this would, this change that you're uh, asking for would uh, cause us to hire another person? No. We do it in my office. office. Your office? Yeah. No. And, and how many um, how many units are we talking about? Uh, 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 the trap. What kind of traffic are you? In other words, how many would you be? Right now, I have a problem for three. Because what it also is, it's a responsibility for HUD vouchers too. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, so this, this is, this is, this is the, a fairly minor thing. No, it's not. No, it's not one thing. No, you said these are three, three units. And three HUD vouchers. Now that I have yeah. to place people in, but then the HUD vouchers are. HUD vouchers are large. Yeah, well, so large. That's what I'm saying. How many are we talk? Um, I'd have to check. I don't know. Right now, I'm just trying to get past the putting people in these um, affordable units. What was the agreement? I mean, there was an agreement with the town. There, I think that there was some funding that went to the town. So, what's the agreement with the town? Because there was, there was a chunk of change that went to the town. Right. So, I mean, it is is it something that we can extricate ourselves from? And can this can we really handle the HUD vouchers as well? We can handle we can handle the vouchers. We can handle the placement within my office. There's no problem with that. We have the time and we have the ability to do that. I think the agreement, um, if we continue with the town, mm -hmm. uh, we will continue to have apartments long-term unoccupied. I think they're handling the HUD vouchers. That's the reason why I don't think they can get around to doing the placements because those HUD vouchers have to be done anyway. Do we have any you know, information from the town about why this hasn't happened? They lost, they lost a long-term employee who was handling Without redundancy in the operation, mm -hmm. there wasn't anyone else who could handle it. So what are they doing about there? I mean, they've just built a new complex. They obviously have to. What complex? The they're town. building. New, yeah, I mean, the town. They're, they're, I mean, they're, it's, it's not as if they can keep not having a, 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 an employee. I'm just thinking, you know, in this age of trying to do shared services, is there a way of figuring out how to share this service between the town and the village? They're trying, it's just not being successful. It hasn't been successful. They are trying. It's not that they're not. It's just that they're just they're not. It's not happening. How many opponents do we have in the village that could be it? Well, let me bring it right now. I'll give you the number by the next meeting for the. I think there's going to be a couple in a new place uh, by ASAP, right? One seventy-two. 
And another one up across from here. So Just one. Right, right across from here. And then there's an eight unit. It's supposed to be one in uh, where we knocked down the house behind the regatta. Mm -hmm. So it's potential five to six. Which we mean empty. Right now there's three empty. Which is crazy. And we, we they're empty and we need we need people to fill them, but we're mm -hmm. having a hard time. Not being filled. Well, you're not having a hard time finding people. You're having a hard time making sure that the process having a hard time helping them. Uh, it's a complicated process. With, and it's a federally regulated process. And, and I'm sure that the, the building owners aren't happy because they're not getting any rent out of the apartment. Right. So, yeah, this is, this, yeah, we got to do this. Right. Just to, the building owners have also expressed that if they're not occupied, they feel like their future approvals are going to be impacted negatively because their affordable units are not occupied. That's really their biggest concern right now. See, well, what I want to make sure is, is we have uh, Mr. Sposino uh, look over the, the, the agreement with the town just to make sure that there are no uh, landmines that we're going to step on. Mm -hmm. so, so this is the original discussion. I mean, this is the, this is the right. pre preliminary discussion. So can we leave this on to two weeks? And Bob, can you we look at that? For a little while. Bob, but Bob's not going to be here. He'll be here in two weeks, but Mary. we probably need to confer about this. If this is someplace the board wants to go, yeah, we'll develop a plan. Okay. Yeah. Well, well it's, it's, I, I hear that it's someplace the board wants to examine if we should go. Yeah, I, I think we more detail. I don't want to get to the destination without seeing any of the uh, morass that might lay in the way. Also, I just want to say in the interim that if the town does step up properly, then it may be. In no, it may not be an issue anymore. Okay. okay. In the event uh, that they can't. Let, let's get through all business and then we can move everything up from new business to next week because we have a uh, executive session. Uh, legislation to regulate the removal of double poles. Jerry, how many double poles? This is when, so people who are watching, uh, Con Ed puts a new pole in or the telephone company puts a new pole in. They don't remove the old pole. They just leave it there to go to rot, I guess. I got my imaginary glove on, right? Yeah. Left hand. Sorry, I thought right. 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 So, so it's 102 in this village. 102 double poles. 102 double poles in this village. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the reason there are zero in the village of Portchester is because they charge the utility company $250 per week when that pole becomes a double pole after an accident or utility change or upgrade and transformer. So there are zero in the village of Portchester because it's 250 per week is what their um, ordinance says. So with us, they're just, we're not charging them, so they just leave it there. I guess they're going to Portchester when they need to. And they're, you know, we're on the pay no mind there, right? right so, so how much should we charge them? I'm really, really excited about what Portchester is doing right now. He's happy with 250. Right. <laughs> Nora knows. Well, can, can we, we're all on the same day. We speak the same can we, can we go back and, and say you have to remove the ones that you currently have? The minute the, yeah. in my opinion, the minute this passes, they're going to get a notice. Bob, uh, ex post facto? Well, it wouldn't be ex post facto if we're saying now. It's the only Latin I know. <laughs> Come on. You went to Xavier. You got to know more Latin than that. We, the uh, it won't be exposed. The fact that they're there doesn't mean they can stay there. They don't really okay, so we, we can just because we haven't forced oh, them to remove them before, right. we can force them to remove them now. Right. That sounds so like don't think they may put up a fight. Mm -hmm. The $25,000 a week fight. Yeah. I'll take that. I guess, I guess we would have to notify them that, uh, that they find it so at some point or, yeah. Okay. Purchasers is not more than seven fifty per day, but they per day per day. It's two fifty per week. I think they had it. Yeah. Uh, seven fifty per they, day. But right? they allow it to go up a bit. They got numbers. There. I think yeah. I think it was for the first was two fifty. Then it was twelve escalating. No escalating. For second and any other sub. But we wouldn't want to escalate. It's like, it's like we just want to escalate. It's, it's like the big goes up every week. <laughs> yeah. Let's not this is a safety measure. Okay, right? It is. This is not just not a revenue. Issue. No, no, revenue. Yeah. That's secondary. Right. Yeah. So everybody's fine with allegedly moving <laughs> forward in this area. Yes. 
Thank yes, you. Yeah, I mean, they really make it hard for the sidewalk to go through. It's it's a it's a mess. And they're homely. Yeah, they're just it's, it's a right. mess, and it's something they should get to. And yeah, they're leaving their old equipment. There's a reason Port Chester asked that. Okay. There was a reason right. for it. Uh, business recruitment. This is uh, one J. This is. Okay, Youngs. I, I I brought this up before that it's called business recruitment for the village of Mamari. Yes. Okay. So so what I would like uh, us to begin to explore Jay. would be would be a um, a mechanism uh, a partnership with Chamber of Commerce, perhaps the uh, the industrial uh, the folks in the industrial zone, uh, um, uh, maybe our planning uh, uh, department uh, commission uh, uh, to figure out what kind of businesses we would like to have in Mamaroneck as opposed to just waiting for them to show up and then complain about it. Uh, the, um, uh, there are other um, uh, communities around the country that have done this. They, uh, there are um, uh, companies that will help you find the kind of businesses you want um, uh, and you, you, you create a wish list and then you go, uh, you go shop for them. Um, uh, off the top of my head, and I, you know, I'm I'm just me. I think we could use a bookstore, an affordable uh, a supermarket, and a, a and a and a hardware store to replace brewers. Um, you know, I, I think we have enough. Uh, Nothing can replace. Brewers. I know. I, I, we don't need any more vape shops or banks. So they, you know, that's it's basically that we have we have uh, vacant businesses, and and we you know we want to we get people to come. Uh, I happen to speak to the owner of uh, Arcade Books in in Rye, who was going to come to Mamaroneck and couldn't. Make a deal with the with the landlord, and and he's not happy in Rye. I'll tell you that much. So um, uh, we could uh, we can change the nature of our uh, of our uh, our district, and make it more of a uh, of our especially that strip on Mamaroneck Avenue, make it more of a of a desirable location where where people want to come, rather than just wait to see what shows up. I mean, when every time I make a turn and I see the the lovely church that's there, it's a, it's a, they did a nice job with it, but that was vacant for a long time. I don't think anybody. Check to see who might want that, uh, might have wanted to come there. I mean, Jerry did. Hmm? Jerry did. Yeah, add on to this. I'm thinking an, an Apple store would have been great. You know, I mean, something but you, you can. You I was can, talked about actually. Yeah, we can make this community a destination uh, uh, if we we proactively look for the things we want to look for. What, how do we incentivize people? Um, but tell them that we want them here. <laughs> well, I think this is like very aspirational. Yes. And that the first thing to do is to get a, a you know a group of stakeholders. It's not just the village, but no. it's the other people that you mentioned. And um, you know, sometimes it's called a business improvement district. Yes, it's a it's a, it's a very good way to. Um, because sometimes you can use a revolving fund. Sometimes you can have a um, you know like a small business incubator. Mm -hmm. But I think it really it, it's not it's not just the role space. of government. It's the role of government. Chamber of Commerce. Yes, and exactly. Leaders, whether and, or not they they live here, yeah. or and they can come to. I mean, if there's an incentive we can provide, then they can then they can say, "Listen, this guy wants to come, but can you can you help out with parking? Can you help out with this? Can you help out with that?" Um, uh, and and we can consider it. But if we don't make the effort, we can't complain when another vape shop opens up. You know, are I we mean, are we allowed to prioritize businesses that we want to see? I feel like we, if you look at my America app now, you have so many multiples of the same kind of business. Are we allowed to say like, you know, we want to put a halt on no. barber shops and salons, and while we're doing, while you're, we're pushing this initiative of recruiting, like I just think there's so many things of the same kind of business that open up in the app. Are we allowed to say no more of X and and move forward? I don't um, know about no more, but I can say no you, more, you've but, got a vacant storefront. What, yeah. what, what, uh, uh, what, what are you doing with it? And, and the landlord might just shrug. And we say, well, well, we've got a bookstore that wants to move in here. You want to talk to us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're really interested in having that bookstore come. You know, So we encourage you to talk to them. That kind of thing. So we, we, it would be more of us kind of push the word to encourage you know, certain businesses. Because I just feel like we, yeah, I, which I agree, because I think there's a lot of stuff on, on America Gab. There's too many of the same thing. It's better. Really and just, and it's just, it doesn't help the business owner. Like, why would you want to open a barbershop here and there's four on the app? Why would you want to open it? It just doesn't make sense. And there's, there's storefronts that have that. been vacant for, for years. Yeah. I just think we should you want know, to I, you encourage know, what, you in different things. I agree. It's, with it's part of the identi identifying what the inventory is, what the demand is, what and, and how this location satisfies that demand. And that's how you market it to the people who are in that business saying, you know, we know A, B, C, D, and A, and 
So yeah, yeah. the backup material I forgot, I, I provided was from the uh, University of uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. and uh, nice. you know, and there are there are small cities and, and villages like us that do this, and uh, I think what we simply do is contact the board, of, uh, you know, pass the resolution that we'd like to do this, um, uh, uh, contact the the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, um, uh, request that the planning commission look at it and say hey what what do you think where where would we, where where should, maybe we should have a, a district you know uh prioritize uh of Maranac avenue uh maybe we should do something for the for the hot you know that kind you know, of thing i think yeah i think the chamber of commerce is a good place to start i think you also have to look at uh the building owners because mm -hmm. that's a separate entity a lot of times from the chamber of commerce yeah because if, if they don't want to rent the place you know it, it's uh it, it, the Chamber of Commerce is not, you know, the Chamber of Commerce is a separate entity from the building owners. I think you should contact, you know, as many landlords as you can. And I think you should spearhead this. Uh, and, and I think, you know, as many of the landlords, because you're not going to get anywhere if you don't have buy-in from them. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, you know, I, I think uh, a, a few people who are uh, longtime residents who are Interested in Mamaronic Avenue, work to better Mamaronic Avenue. I think uh, you know, Sonny Goldberg. Did you know Sonny? Yeah. And Sonny Goldberg uh, worked for years and years to beautify Mamaronic Avenue. She was uh, kind of the, the godmother of uh, getting the uh, village to bury those lines and mm -hmm. you know, and uh, all of that in the late nineties. Uh, so you know, I think you're I think you're on a good path, but uh, you know, it's it's a tough road to hoe. Uh, well, uh, I mean, if if the board takes the official uh, stance that we would like to find out, we'd like to do a survey uh, of, of vacant businesses in our business districts. We'd like to begin to prioritize. We'd like to begin to make a list of desirable uh, um, uh, uh, businesses that we'd like to uh, that, that we want to come to the village and and begin an outreach program. If the if the if the board takes that that uh, uh, that resolution, refers it to the appropriate uh, uh, entities, I would be happy. To, to jump in, but I think it, it has to be an official uh, village policy. I, I, I don't think this board should right now say what kind of businesses. No, no. Be. Say that we want to. We want to find out what we want to find out what the priorities for recruiting desirable businesses to uh, to our, our downtown. Well, do I'm, I'm fine with that. Who's going to do the resolution? You want to... uh, I'll I'll write it up and I'll uh, work with him. I'll write it up with Dan and we'll we'll have it uh, ready in two weeks. Thank you. All right. Was the dance that's like I don't need this. No, he's already got it. He's got it. He's already got it. Yeah, you got it. It'll start. Whereas the village of America was incorporated in 1895. Yeah, that's always. I can never. I can never. You know, copy your your beautiful proclamation. Oh, thank you. So Dan, I guess I'll set up an appointment with you, and and we'll sit down and talk, discuss this. Is everybody fine with that? I just talking. Are you around with that? We have to really make sure that they're uh, they're non-governmental stakeholders. Yeah, well, oh, absolutely. I think that that's the only absolutely. way it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it, it, yeah. Lilani, what? Okay. Going? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> I did. I was sitting there. Okay. Um, okay. I, I have two questions. I I think that the judges are probably here for C, and the poetry garden. Um, the, they're going to need approval. They're trying to get this sign up by April. So if we wait too long, all right. Let, let's it'll just take do too poetry long. garden. Then we got we got a break for. Uh, exactly. And also the um this, this resolution this um your resolution. No, that that's 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 that's, that's a correction. Uh, oh, to, it was a correction. Okay. Tonight. All right. Thank all you. Right, so they just it, it's they, they had the wrong name. Good job. So what are we doing now? So, poetry. Um, the poetry garden, um, which is the little garden right out here, um, has a basically a spot where nothing grows. So the, mm -hmm. the staff has really tried to, I think they've done two plant, two sets of plantings and nothing is growing. Right. So um, the Cox family who, who really got donated most of the plantings and, and one of the sculptures um, has offered to donate a sculpture that says poetry which would sort of be a little bit of a buffer between the police parking area and be located in the place where, where no one could get anything to grow. And um, they, they were gonna pay for three quarters of it and the arts council is going to use their reserve fund for the rest of it, but they just need permission. So there's a, there's a photograph that has 
the, um, the, love the, lo the location of the fence behind the tortoise. It can, it's just sort of orange. It's not a fence. It's, I mean, I think actually the, the sculpture not... will kind of look like, it won't look like a fence, but it'll be a little bit of a barrier between the park. It'll, it'll define the park. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the wording, the, the, the shape and size of the letters is down below. It's 48 inches high by about 13 and a half feet wide. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll so we need to put it on like for the next, you know, yeah. for two weeks. Yeah, sure. Anybody got a problem with that? What regard? Yeah. Pretty non controversial. Well, Mary Louise Cox was also an icon in the community. Okay. Uh, uh, everything else that's been on for old business, new business will become old business and be taken first next week. Yeah. Oh, thanks. In two weeks. Two in weeks. weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Oh, are we that late? Yeah. yeah. Right. Because of you, Lou. All right, we have three items on executive session. Okay. Appointment of member of the committee. I, I, I'm going to make these motions all at one point. Appointment of member of the committee to the environment is anticipated that a motion will be offered that to executive session 105 1F of the New York State Public Offices. Mm -hmm. uh, Village prosecutor. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session. Uh, pursuant to 101F to discuss the medical financial credit as a particular person. It's about hiring a village prosecutor. Uh, village manager contract renewal. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session to discuss the medical financial credit and employment history of a particular person, persons, or corporations. Yada, yada, yada. All right, I make all three of those motions. So move, second. Oh, you didn't make yeah. So he, so you second. He second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Four. Oh, Trustee Rollins? Yes. Trustee Isaac Reed? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Yeah, it's got Sorry. some need. Can we talk about pumps or not? Um, Nothing tonight. Not, not, well, I mean, he can come. They're already talking about it. I, I, wanted, I just want to bring it up. And refer, I mean, I don't know, we should change what? Yeah, I want to bring it up and refer to them, but they're already talking about it. So, so I don't. Thank you. Make
Mayor, there's no audio. Okay. Uh, LMC, you. there's reports that there's no audio. Yeah. You're muted on Zoom. Yeah. Done. Oh, okay. Right. Augie, just together. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sally, can you hear us now? I can. Thank you. Thank you. What is that feedback? Yeah. Oh, Sally muted herself. All right, fine. Okay. Uh, we open the meeting. Uh, there's emergency exits to my right, emergency exits to my left. Uh, please use them in the event of emergency. Walk out calmly. Um, please mute your cell phones. And we open the meeting. The first item, let me, let me just preface this. I know there's a lot of people here for uh, one particular issue of public here. Uh, the first item on the agenda is communication to the board. Communication to the board. Uh, has a limit of five minutes. Uh, the public uh, hearing, uh, th there's really no limit, but I'd ask everybody to just be mindful that there are other people uh, waiting and willing to speak. So uh, you know, use, use your own judgment. Uh, so anybody want to address the board on an issue that's not on the agenda? Tim. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Tim. Um, I'm Tim O'Connor, Water School, Washington Green Section of Merrick. Um, I'm going to speak on behalf of myself, private citizen Tim O'Connor, and I give myself as a member of the Fox and Rec Commission. Thanks. Um, well, let's start off. I got three things I want to talk about um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. I had a little discussion with my son this morning about it. Mm -hmm. um, Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We don't have that in Washingtonville, unfortunately. But uh, we just don't have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness at all. And let me tell you where my mission is. Uh, my mission is here right now. Pursuit of happiness. Well, let's start with the parallel flood planning. Has that been done yet? Do we have a parallel flood mitigation plan yet? Yes, no. No. Gary, where are we with? Let me ask. Where are we with the uh, dredging plan? Um, the dredging plan, um, according to our site visit with the Army Corps and the state, is that they uh, provide us with a modified dredging plan to remove the larger material in the um, in the river, um, which includes river rock and sand. Uh, not necessarily going deep into the into the rivers to remove areas. We're limited to 200 feet on either side of bridges, and we're limited to um, 100 foot at a time um, to dredge areas that are not within 200 feet. All those things have been worked out as of last week. We permitted um, we we had our consultant fill out the general permit so that we can have that those provisions and work on those provisions. <coughs> and uh, I was promised by the vendor because we purchased an estimated to do it ourselves that we'd have to a piece of equipment today, but I haven't heard back from them today. But I know that the bucket which is the final piece. Tim, that was supposed to come in, did come in on Friday. I'm not sure why. Um, I haven't been able to follow up on So, so I think the answer is it's going to be happening post-haste. It's going to be happening post-haste, but there's also ongoing discussions with the Army Corps and the Army Corps is going to be in the village on um, Wednesday night. We're gonna be discussing the plan in front of the um, IABC, which is the Industrial um, Advisory Business Coalition, or wherever they call themselves. Um, so they'll be here discussing, um, they may or may not um, disclose that they have uh, uh, 90 90 percent plan that they're going to present this village board in July of this year for the um, doubling um, <clears throat> of the span uh, of Ward Avenue Bridge from 45 to 85 feet and their elimination of Ward Avenue Park. All right, great. So there is a plan, which is awesome. 
It's just that why can't we create a document like a Microsoft project, put that on the link? That way you have start dates, end dates, milestones, completion date. So that's on me. I promise that. I promise that to, to WNA and others. And because I've been trying to deal with negotiating with these agencies and other things, um, I haven't had time to put that together. I know our engineer Gino has started that, okay, but um, I'll promise the board, Tim, that I'll have that to them uh, for February 27th, and then uh, they can decide whether they want to put it on the work session for distribution or not. Great, because it, it, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's a waste of time. Everybody's busy, right? And so it'd be great to have a document, look at the document, point and click. Information's there, the book's there, anybody can grab it. Uh, I understood a lot of people out there that don't have the electronics. Maybe they can swim by and pick up a copy too. You know, we've got the greatest generation of folks still living with us, uh, thankfully. But that's sort of the thing that we like to see because it's easy to, you know, point and click on a link and get some information versus wasting your guys' time trying to get information from here, these, you know, these meetings. But okay, great. I, I agree with that. But I, I agree. It is, it is a little bit of a you know, time consuming to have individuals come up here. So, so Tim, what I envisioned was an Excel spreadsheet with um, some information on it, but also where I am and maybe updated every couple of weeks, every month of where potentially the Army Corps is and all of those things. As I get updates, I update the form. I could easily, you know, work on that and we provide that to you. Great. I, I appreciate that. And, and that's the part of where I'm up to get tonight for is the pursuit of happiness. You know, we've got the flood issues. We have our meetings, you know, the, the VNA, uh, you know, in our neighborhoods there, and we have uh, residents that come down and they have PTSD. Mm -hmm. I have it too. And so that's the effect of the yeah. after come of mine. And so that's that, you know, who wants to go through that? That's not the pursuit of happiness that is outlined in the Declaration of Independence. We don't have that. And it's not fair that all of us, when it's a rainstorm, like it was two weeks ago, it was an inch and a half of rain within 24 hours, and it all affects each other. Mm -hmm. Hey, you turn on your pumps, let's yeah. get ready. And it's like, let's man the battle stations every time it rains. And then we have to go through the whole simus of, go through the whole rainstorm, check the drains, check everything, the sump pumps, and then go to work the next day. So there are folks out there that are going through this P PTSD issue, just to let you guys know that. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Life, right? Part of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. I sent this board a few emails back on uh, January 9th, 20, uh, 2023, February 10th of last week. Uh, we came to the board here at 9 7 22, and board letter sat around over there. We spoke about uh, in 10 11 as well. I sent this several documents on behalf of Washingtonville Neighborhood Association. I think it was four in total. One of which was part of the cell phone tower uh, mm -hmm. concern. And I didn't receive anything from the board about the cancer causing issue that we have in our neighborhood. Nothing. I didn't get I, I didn't get even a reply back. I didn't get buckets. I didn't get anything other than crickets. And so just to let you guys know from a resident, mm -hmm. is that we do have an issue of some source of cancer in our neighborhood. And my wife was affected. And she, her half of her thyroid is gone. Mm -hmm. And so we have residents in our neighborhood. I don't know if you guys know this in our plaza. Yeah. Okay, there is a cancer causing issue out there that's affecting thyroid. We know of 10 or more people that have this issue. My wife, as well as my neighbors, have went through surgery to remove a thyroid. And if you're lucky, you get half the thyroid removed. If you're not that lucky, you're on medication for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And what for? Is that the end result of being a good citizen, paying your taxes, hard working, and all of a sudden you got to go through life with a thyroid because in your neighborhood you may have an issue? I don't understand what this board's sitting on. It's, 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 not, it's not right. Latimer, Mr. Latimer sat right there at 9 7, 22 after I went up here for about 10 minutes, went on the tirade. And all he said was if you need help, Please call me. Have you guys called George Latimer? We've, uh, we referred the discussions that we had with Mr. Latimer and the health department. Village doesn't have a health department. Right? Of we don't, yeah. The county has the health department. Uh, so you know, 
these issues have been referred to now, but I can tell you this, Tim, uh, I, I sent an email to your organization about the uh, transfer station no longer taking uh, uh, food scraps. That's from the county though, right. I know, but the That's reason that that got shut down was because the county was able to say that this is, you know, in, in, in a, an economically uh, depressed area that was, you know, impacted adversely by environmental conditions. So I'm just saying, because of the advocacy, and I said this to you, Reba, because the advocacy that you guys had, this was the first step. You know, they would have been dumping garbage there in perpetuity if we hadn't made noise about that. But that's one variable out of a lot of you. You had I, Tim, I know. Blood I'm, Brothers over there with the Mason's eye. You got the old chimney, the the the, the generator. Yeah. God knows only what they burned over there. Around the corner, 100 feet from the show deck, you got mm -hmm. the Con Edison uh, mm -hmm. substation over there. You know, what, what they did over the years with the transfer station, who knows? Mm -hmm. We've been affected with three floods in the last 60 years. The water needs to be tested. The soil needs to be tested. The source needs to be, we need to look at where the source is coming from. You can't tell me that over 10 people have thyroid cancer and that's just a coincidence. Oh. Uh, no, okay. I can't live that on my watch. So here's the deal now. We need communication back from your board, letting, letting the residents know, because I think it's only fair as taxpayers that we pay you our taxes for our service to keep us healthy, to keep us safe. And we need that information back so we can actually disseminate that information to our organization monthly. Right now, we don't have any information. So if you're working on something with the county, please involve us. Update us, it's only fair. And I'll tell you right off the bat, you know, it's it's not right for all these people to go in life with a thyroid issue. And if we're sitting on it and we're not being proactive on it, we're all gonna suffer. And that's the pursuit of happiness that we're not mm -hmm. getting. Uh, all right, that's all I have right now. I appreciate it as Thank always. You. Thanks for your time. Yeah, I, I just wanna, I, I'm gonna, I just wanna point out uh, something that, Tim talked about that uh, the community should know. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jerry, uh, Trustee Young, um, our village engineer, uh, that was it, right? That went up to went went up to uh, New Paltz to meet with the DEC. That's the Department of Biomedical Conservation, the Department of State, and the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, there's been, you know, unfounded accusations on, you know, some of the websites about this being an illegal meeting, and it wasn't. Uh, Lalani listened in on the phone. She wasn't there. I zoomed in, and I was the only village official to speak. And the only thing I talked about is I talked about the PTSD. I talked about what has been happening to our community. I talked about, you know, how unfair it is that they're worried about our dredging affecting other communities when they sat there for 125 years and let those two rivers become the storm repositories for White Plains, for Harrison, for Scarsdale, for the town of Mamaroneck. And I tried my best, and I, and I, you know, and I, I think I, I did an okay job of conveying uh, how unfair it is and how important it is for this village to do parallel. Because, uh, you know, the Army Corps was you know, worried about you know, us stepping on their toes. And I'm saying, you know, we want to do stuff that's not in the area that you're you know, affecting. And we're doing it with our own money. And you're, you're worried about how it's going to affect somebody up in Scarsdale, which is uphill. It's, it makes no sense. This is just common sense. And what, what happened, what came out of that, is that the person from the Army Corps is new. They'd never seen our rivers. And the DEC came down, and the Army Corps came down, and they you know, they uh, investigated our rivers because you know, the guy from the Army Corps, you know, he was acting like this was a stream that was going through a virgin forest. Yeah. And that, you know, it, it had never been altered before. But, you know, and I, I impressed upon it, all these streams and rivers are channelized and none of them are in their natural condition. And I think that that, Jerry, I think that had, that had the visits and our advocacy had a, uh, an effect. Yep. The visits were... were they needed to confirm what you were saying, and they did, they did confirm the business. And, and, and the message they got 
from Tom and from me was that we're not going to wait for the Army, Army Corps of Engineers. We're not waiting around and we, we're going we're gonna to start. You need to help us start now. We're not, we're not filling out paperwork. We're not doing studies. We're gonna get, we want to get to work now. It's an emergency now. And I, and I mentioned the very things. Every time it rains, people are, people are, are, are their, their stomachs are in a knot. I hear you, Tim. I, I, I share your frustration. I, um, I hope it's enough, but we're doing the, doing the best we can. We really are. So I'll, I'll add to, in regards to the wireless towers, this is something that I brought up today in terms of how the wireless towers could affect our environment. And as um, our village um, attorney stated, this is something beyond our local level. It's something that we have to bring to, uh, you know, to state, to federal. And we some some of us do have good working relations with our state and and federal um, uh, legislators. So that's something that I personally am very interested in because I understand. I I don't want I I don't the pursuit of life, liberty, and uh, and what happiness. and happiness <laughs> is very important to each and every one of us. And I don't want any of us to be affected by something that if we can prevent, prevent, or fix. I can't, I can't stop something that, um, or I can't tear down something that is already here. I mean, I possibly could, I don't know. We don't know that yet. Um, I could fix what is, has been here. I can't go back in time and I apologize for that. And I also will personally, myself would apologize for not responding in the time that I've been in a seat to your, your emails, but it's not, and I also even spoke to Jerry or somebody, I don't know, about um, testing our, our soil. Cause I, I personally think that there's something in our soil that is, is not beneficial to our residents. So thank you. Thank you. Robert Stark, 704 Palmer Court. I'm on the traffic commission. I'm not talking about traffic. Um, I have two things I want to talk about. One, first time I was here uh, at the last flight committee meeting when the announcement got the DC letter. You came down, you responded immediately and, and arranged to contact the appropriate official. Thank you. Good job. Um, my issue is that now I hear that there's a meeting on Wednesday that the Army Corps is coming here. So I have several questions. Are the trustees aware that the Army Corps was coming? I haven't finished yet. Uh, no. no, 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 I was, I was raising sick. I, I will be there, but go ahead. Um, so, so you're aware of it. So my question is, not my question, second thing is, I was at the December meeting of the Flight Mitigation Committee and the first thing that they said is that their goal was to provide transparency and information to the residents mm -hmm. uh, regarding what's happening with the Army Corps. The fact that the Army Corps people are gonna be here on Wednesday to answer questions, has the, or have the, has the Flood Mitigation Committee been advised of that? Do they plan on attending? Yes. Have you provided uh, information to the residents regarding this? I think this is significant and I'm happy to hear it. And so that's my, that's my, that's my question. Jerry, who's the, flood, who's the other call going to be addressing? Is that the uh, industrial? The, 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 and, but private, also, um, it's a private group. I'm not even going. But the also uh, the um, Andrew Spatz is part of that group. He's on the flight committee. Has, and has the um and the I believe Tony will be there as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's their it's meeting. It's not our meeting. I understand, but the fact that the Army Corps is coming here, I think, is that would people would love to know that because it's it's I think it's a great thing and positive information. I think we're all happy to hear that, but we need to hear. And following up on what Tim said, he was asking for information. And I don't think we would have heard about that meeting on Wednesday had Tim not come up here and said, what's happening? That's that's my issue. Okay. 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 Just, just let me reiterate, though, it is not our meeting. It's not a public meeting. But it's information that... Yeah. that and the Army Corps is here all the time, too. I mean, they, they come and, and, and check the sites. Mayor, it's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. what, uh, Which is under my report. It's oh, on your report. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. It was so advertised. It was advertised Friday. 
Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, well, to, to a couple of, I just want to say that um, I think that I'm glad that we're going to have a, a document. Jerry is doing a flood mitigation report today because we decided three weeks ago we needed one and I asked him to and he, he'll be reporting on flood mitigation regularly at meetings, which is good for the public, but I, I wouldn't ever discourage anybody from coming and mm -hmm. speaking because no matter what we do right or what we do wrong, people should always keep coming and telling us Absolutely. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is going to be a public hearing, uh, PLLB 2023, Terms of Office of the Mayor and the Trustees of the Village of Memorial. Now, before I ask for a motion uh, to open the meeting, uh, open the hearing, rather, I just want to make a couple of clarifications. Uh, I think that there's a consensus that we've been hearing from the community uh, that a referendum uh, on this issue uh, would be the appropriate way to go. And I think that, the, that, that there's a lot of arguments that have been made that have been uh, inaccurate, but I think that that is a fair uh, mm -hmm. yeah. position to take. Uh, you know, we proposed this law last year and we proposed it with a referendum and the uh, previous board, uh, we couldn't get three votes to do it. Uh, so then there was an election and three trustees who sit here uh, ran on this issue and they won. Uh, and you know, it, it's for me uh, who have been, who has been uh, on and off this board on the town of Amaranic board, uh, pretty much uh, for the past 22, 23 years. Uh, and having served in a community like the town of Americ, where the term was four years, and having served in a community like the village of Americ, where the term is two years, and there is a contested election every year, uh, it is a different uh, atmosphere. Uh, it, it is, you know, in my opinion, it takes more than... Uh, two years to adequately get up to speed and to really get into your game. Uh, I think uh, that's part of it. And, but also uh, for someone who's been involved in electoral politics all that time, uh, for a community like this to go through uh, what we have in this place is a very competitive, uh, sometimes boisterous elections. Uh, to have to do that every year and restart it every year, doesn't give the community a time to settle and a time to heal. This is just my opinion. Uh, and, but it's, it's an opinion informed by long, long service in this community. Um, so I, I just want to assure people that I think that, you know, you're going to see a, uh, a, a consensus to have a, a vote. And if it goes up or it goes down, you know, that, that's, that's fine. It's all the same to me. Uh, and it's all the same to all of us. But, you know, I think it's a good idea. But it's a major change. And change is hard. And uh, nobody likes to, uh, you know, it, it change we often project negatively. Uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, this is happening quickly and I understand that, but this is a board that is gonna get a lot of stuff done. Uh, we're not gonna let things languish and uh, let progress uh, be impeded forever. But when somebody makes a good and valid point, I think we should respond to that good and valid point and be able to uh, tack to a different, uh, course when necessary. So I just wanted to set up uh, that before we begin so that uh, people don't, yeah, and, and as I just want to point out, at no point was any member of the board of peers term that we are currently in going to be extended. If this was going to get passed, uh, I would be running for re-election in the end of the year for a longer term. Uh, the other three trustees, uh, would be running next year at the end of their current two-year term. So you would have another chance to decide about whether you wanted them or not. Uh, but I'm fine with doing a two-year term too, it's the truth. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, so that being said, I need to, you want to say, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, real quickly, I wanted to clear it, since this was my initiative to, to bring it forward, it's the reason it's, it's here. I wanted to just say, this is a moment, uh, uh, this, the fact that we're discussing this issue, a moment of pride for the students who brought it to our attention. The students from Maranac High School 
which is why uh, it why I, I picked up the uh, the mantle on it. It was brought to my attention by uh, uh, Elsa Rubin, who was a, 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 um, a district leader back then. When I first got on the board, first thing looked at it and 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 I said that's great. Brought it on, and and the the rest is uh, is uh, history, I guess. Um, what we have before us tonight is is the law that was uh, written up last year came right off the shelf i asked bob about it. he says i got it and that's what that's what it is <laughs> so that so that that's it it, it, it is attached uh, to a, a four-year staggered term but the point of it is to eliminate off-year elections and to maximize turnout that's the point it's the only thing i care about um and uh, the the Excuse me. Yeah, you can't talk order. to me. You're out of order. Please stop. Okay. Uh, um, uh, so that's the only thing I care Please about. Please stop. Um, the, very, the very uh, measure came up last year. It was attached to a mandatory referendum, and I thought that would have been gr great. And I, I, we agreed to do that to get it passed. But the people at the time who were against this had enough votes to kill it. They killed it. They killed the measure, they killed the, the referendum last year, all right? So this board, if it has a referendum, will take a different tack. I would hope that we would get a unanimous uh, a vote on a referendum this time around. Um, the uh, vote, uh, um, if this does pass as written, if it were to pass tonight, there would be an opportunity for a referendum, but it would be a heavy lift and probably not, not possible for the opponents to, uh, to mount a, a successful challenge. I understand that. I think the 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 um, the uh, law probably needs um, probably needs work and it needs to go back to a, a work session. That's likely what will happen. And if it does go to a referendum at that point, I think it'll be good to have the referendum in June when the students are back from um, from college and they can help us uh, uh, help us uh, sell the program. And uh, anybody who doesn't like it can look them in the eye and tell them to go away. All right. So that's uh, that's it. Also, I want to clear up. I erroneously said that the League of Women Voters was behind this. It was my mistake. Um, I got the impression because I had been to League of Women Voters meetings where I discussed it with individuals who were very enthusiastic about the idea of, uh, of these uh, uh, biannual elections uh, synced to the federal schedule. Uh, the League of Women Voters does not have a position on this. It was my mistake. I said it enough times that Tom repeated it. I just want to make that clear. I apologize to the League of Women Voters. And I look forward to hearing the comments. It shows right. you how impressionable I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've okay. made mistakes before. I think more than one. Uh, I'd like a motion to open a public hearing. So moved. Second. Pull the roll. Trustees Rowling? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Thank you. Everyone. Uh, the microphone is open for the public. Yes. I think we need to clarify what a referendum means. Okay, first of all, let, let's just set some grounds. Anybody has anything to say, get to the microphone, right, and ask the question. We, we, we don't yell out, people at home can't hear you. But the question was, what is a referendum? A referendum is a vote that is taken uh, upon an issue uh, by the whole electorate. It's not a vote just of the Board of Trustees, but a Board of Trustees has to authorize in this instance, there, were, there are two paths to a referendum. The one path would be 20% uh, of all registered voters would have to sign a petition to force a ballot initiative. That's one. That, that, but we are, truthfully, uh, I, I don't think, I, although there's a lot of people making a lot of noise, I don't think they would do the work to get the 20%. Uh, so... What we're doing here tonight is we're short, you know, if, if we do this, we would be short circuiting that and saying, we as a board are gonna make it a, a referendum and the voters can then vote on it. And if the voters vote no, the law doesn't pass. The voters vote yes, the law passes. We have to pass the law first, right? And it's called the permissive referendum. And then the voters give permission to that referendum. I hope that is, if anybody wants to talk, Please go to the mic. Can I say something? Sure. Okay. So the law that we have before us tonight is for a permissive referendum, which means anybody who it will become law within, I guess, 30 days, unless residents get paper petitions signed to the number of 2,400 saying they want to push for a permissive referendum, which would be scheduled sometime between, you know, 
15 and 70 days after March 15th. Um, we don't have, we have the opportunity to require a referendum when we adopt this law, but it needs to be in the law. So that's not what we're, we're not voting on that tonight. And if we were gonna change the law to include that, I, the village attorney would could opine, but it's a significant enough change that it the yeah, public hearing has to be re-noticed. So right now, what we're discussing, the law we're discussing and voting on would be to change change the law to have four-year terms beginning with this next set of mayor and trustee race in November, three years, then on the, 20, in the 20, uh, 2026, it would be four years. And then next year, there would be four-year terms. And it would, only, it would be law unless 2,400 people signed, 2,400 registered voters signed a petition asking for a permissive referendum, in which case the village would have to run a special election. So that's what's before us now. Um, it, we it could, we could, hurt. I think it, it sounds like it's, a, you don't understand. Okay, so it's- Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. stop, okay. please. I'm asking you please not to do this from the audience. All right, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try one more time. I worked with the students and I, and, and I think the students request had been to have to tie this to a referendum. Some laws in New York State require a referendum that's a mandatory referendum. Changing the term and changing the length of the term and changing the, the year of an election does not require a referendum. It's a permissive referendum, which requires 20% of voters to sign petitions asking for that. Or, or if we pass a law, in the law, it, it, it provides for- A referendum. a referendum, right. So right now, what we're voting on tonight is um, to adopt this, these two changes to our law without any referendum, putting the onus on the residents to push for a referendum. Sounds to me that other members of the board have been persuaded that a referendum is, is, a, is a good idea, um, but that, that's not what is before us tonight. So I think they're the same kind of topics of conversation. We got a lot of emails um, it, and I would say all of the emails that we got asked for a referendum. Some people were in favor, some people were opposed, some people were um, unclear as to what the merits or demerits of this would be, but universally people thought it needed to be decided by the voters, not by the five trustees. All right, uh, Mr. Liberty. Our civics professor can clarify. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to correct that. That's everything you're saying is according to the accurate. So um, let me just say my name is Joe Liberti. Uh, I'm a social studies teacher at Mernick High School. Um, I'm actually here tonight um, on behalf of the students uh, who did the research, crafted the proposal, um, and they uh, are currently enrolled in college. They draft the public comments and ask that I come tonight and, and read them into the record. Uh, so those students are Daniel Marsh, Jack Owen, Justin Solis, and the latest Sutton. We'd like to thank the mayor and the village of Mimarnik Board of Trustees for advancing our proposal to align local elections with the federal schedule, which our research shows better reflects the diversity of the entire village. After three years of activism and two failed attempts at getting the board to consider a proposal, we cannot describe how thankful we are for our mentors and the community stakeholders who've aided us in our journey through this process and allowed to get to this point. Please know that our proposal comes from a genuine desire a genuine desire to advance democracy and elevate all voices and all votes. Aligning local elections will increase voter turnout, make community engagement easier for voters, and broaden minority participation in our local democracy. It is not just our data that supports these conclusions. Academic studies, issue one examples prove that simplifying election opens the door to broader public engagement. Even setting aside these empirics, our proposal makes logical sense. Decreasing the frequency of elections and increasing their importance provides incentives for voters to make informed choices across all levels of government and actually turn out the vote. The current layout of local elections does not truly represent the voices of all village residents, with less than half of registered voters are participating in all cycle local elections on average. When people are unable to name their elected officials and when many races go uncontested, it's time for change. Regardless of the political rankings at the moment, our proposal represents 
a first step towards creating a new system based on robust community participation and informed local discourse. We hope the board, the board moves forward with our proposal, but consider the following changes in work session. One, clarify that only newly elected officials will see a change in lengths of term. Two, some lengths of terms will initially need to be less than four years in order to align elections with the federal schedule. And three, that the voters are given a chance to approve of this local law directly through referendum. The students, thank you for your time and your consideration. And thank you for hearing my comments. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Hi, I'm Catherine Miller. I live at 528 Monroe Avenue in the Marin Village. Um, well, I'm disturbed at this notion of such a big change. Um, and I don't really quite see why. I do like the idea. There, I think there are a lot of different issues here. So one issue has to do with presidential elections bringing greater turnout. That's true. I certainly think we should have voting for trustees on presidential election years. I also think that they should not be staggered. It's only because things are staggered that every, every two year plan means there's a perpetual campaign going on that people have said. I don't think we need a perpetual campaign, but I don't think there's any particular logic to saying, oh, so therefore we must go every four years. I'm really against that four year term for trustees. So I think we should have elections on presidential years. Yes, bring up the turnout. And we could also have them when Congress is elected two years later, so that there would be a two year term and no staggering. And I don't think it's such a problem, you know, with um, continuity on the board. It's a very unlikely case that five new trustees are elected. I think we can manage. They'll hang out with you got, you know, with the previous trustees. So Congress can manage this possible thing, right? So I do think that two years is, you know, a very good system and we could continue with a two year system, but I would like to see it modified so there's no staggering and um, so that it always takes place in these years when people will come to the polls. So just let me understand the suggestion. So all five members every even number of years. Yes. Okay, it's synchronized two year terms. Understood, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you better have agreed with the previous speaker. <laughs> <laughs> no worries there. <laughs> My name is Mark Thompson, also of 528 Monroe Avenue. First of all, before I say anything, I just want to let you know I'm very happy with the current Board of Trustees. And Thank you. as long as you're on the ballot every two years or every four years, you have my vote. However, I've lived here for 23 and a half years, and there have been times where I've not been exactly in love with the people who had occupied your seats. And it was during these times where I was really looking forward to the next election when I could cast a ballot and hopefully affect some change in the makeup of the Board of Trustees. Now, I remember what this room was like 16, 18 years ago. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I know you did. You were there. You know, and you know what when the whole day labor thing was raging on, the various pitch battles over development uh, projects that were being bitterly contested. Um, things got really ugly here. And those issues were one thing, but I remember some of your predecessors said things that were downright shocking. I mean, literally along the line of Said that. In fact, one individual who was on the board said something that was so shocking it made the national news. And well, that guy was eventually voted out, you know. And the reason why I mention all this is because I remember while this was all going on, I was sitting over there as a voter and a concerned citizen and thinking, this is not a situation I want going on for an extended period of time let alone four years. Um, you know, I wanted to change and I wanted to change, you know, pronto. And eventually it happened. I mean, um, 
the, the makeup of the board of trustees eventually changed. Um, it was messy, there were setbacks, uh, but eventually we got to where we are now. And I think it, it's because of the current system that we have. Um, I see this change as, as potentially a double-edged sword. Um, I do agree with um, a lot of Tom's arguments, but I also am concerned about what might happen um, in terms of unintended consequences. You know, you don't want to be stuck with somebody who embarrasses the village. And we did have people who embarrassed the village. And I don't want to see that happen again. I am not worried about this group of people embarrassing the village, not at all. I'm talking about years down the road when there's a different group of people running the show. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Mark. So I'll put it down, but what, synchronized two-year terms? Um, right? I didn't necessarily say that. All right, well, that was that? If we're going to go with this sense. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Someone's glasses. Is that me? Or... Is that you? It's not because of these. Yeah, this. She, she can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> I am Hillary Dawn from One Fifth to One Panama. Um, just before I came here, I, I wrote something out, but I went onto the Mamaronek Observer and I read that um, that Nora had actually um, proposed. I agree with Nora. This is true. What I read. I agree with Nora that there should be a referendum on the 2023 ballot and that the law should be the law be changed to take effect in 2024 if the voters choose four year elections. Whoever is elected this year should only serve two years. Um, what I read on the Mamaronek Observer was that um, nobody else voted for that. Um, I don't know if that's true, because it's not a real newspaper, but I I do agree with Nora in what, in what she's in, in that. That was correct. And I feel very strongly about that. did that come up? It was at the last meeting? Mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. when we scheduled this public hearing. Well, yeah. we, but last year you had an opportunity to vote for it. Yes. I'm not talking about last year. Yeah, I'm talking about last this year. year. Yeah, but they, they, year. they neglected to talk about what happened last year. I'll tell, I'll be happy to say if what Nora I said. If Nora said that, I, I agree you. with Nora. That's okay, what I'm going to say. And I think she's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Nobody should grow more than a two-year term right now until the voters have decided. And I think the voters should decide in November. I don't think, I don't know what a referendum and no one, everyone's very confused. Look at, Amy knows everything. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Amy's right. confused. If Amy's confused, she everyone else is confused. And I agree with Mark and Kathy. I like the board. You know, Leilani, Love Leilani, obviously, and I like that we got um, Manny and Leilani in. I think it, you know we should have younger voters, and the hundreds of doors I not want young people on our board. We want people who have, you know, that they just want younger people on the board. So, as I've only lived here to, since two thousand and seventeen, and have only witnessed one mayor and a bucket full of drama. My experience is too limited for a personal opinion, but I will do full research and speak to many residents. My concerns about a four year term is that I have seen too much dysfunction from trustees in the last few years on this board. One trustee during COVID wasn't even in this country and nobody, you know, Tom, people tried to fight that. And Nora, it was wrong. It was really wrong. And two trustees, didn't even show up after Hurricane Ida. And the nonprofits in this village have carried the can for a year and a half. And Mallory is running on this issue that there was no government help. I mean, Manny had to help with FEMA. So that is my concern about a four year board that we could have been struck, stuck with somebody who was fighting with our village manager and, and all these, you know, and a Democrat party who's doing nothing in this village. Mm. Nothing. We don't even know who they are. We don't even, they're like this invisible group mm -hmm. who think they have power. And no one knows who they are. I look at Hastings' website. I look at Jobs Ferry. I mean, yes, every trustee I know that I do know, I talked to a Rye one, and she said, we have a 
if we have a village manager and they're doing a good job, what's wrong with having four year terms? But I haven't spoken to enough people personally, and I like to talk to people and I shouldn't have an opinion because I haven't lived here long enough. But, um, but I do really believe in what I said too, that if Nora did say that, I think Nora is absolutely right. I don't fully believe in the Mamaronek Observer because they're not right. They're not, you know, they're not- Journalists. They're not journalists. They're not what Lou is, but I don't what? think there should be lies. And I think there should be, you know, things out in the open about all of this. And I think it should be on the ballot in November. Thank you. Hillary, can I ask uh, you, your paper, Synchronized two year terms or staggered four? I don't know yet. I okay, okay. Got it. Well, thank you. Hello, young man. Hi, um, my name is Luca Jovio. I live uh, down on Nine Acres Lane in Orienta. Um, I'm a MHS student. I'm a senior in the original civic research and action program. So this is my fourth year in the program. Whoa. I'm very close friends with students who um, drafted the legislation and, and, and pushed so hard for it to get passed. Um, I'm very proud that it's gotten to this point. Um, I recently turned 18 this past fall, and uh, even though I'm going to college next year, I do very much intend to vote absentee ballot in future elections. Um, and, I can, and I've also been fortunate enough over the past four years to have volunteered in two local elections, one for our U.S. representative, and even this past year with uh, the trustee race. And um, based on my experience, I I can't stress um, enough how important it is to get adequate voter engagement, um, you know, and make sure that everybody in the village is able to get their voice heard, especially by those in power. Um, so as a student who's gonna be going to college next year and is gonna be voting absentee, I would much rather prefer to vote on one absentee ballot than multiple absentee ballots. Um, and I'm sure many other uh, people in the community have the same, have the same, uh, opinion uh, on this matter and um and it's a it's a far more efficient process and uh and makes the voting process far more um far more convenient and gets let make sure that a more diverse set of the community and the members of the community is able to get their point across and that's really what i believe that this is about is ensuring that the um the opinions and the voices of all residents of village of Heard, um, as the research does show that on the major election, the general election, the midterm elections, um, they often get far greater turnout than the off year elections that the election cycle is currently. Um, and that's what Thank you very much for your time and your voice and support. Let Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck and call. I have a question are you, because Lou seems to be getting a tally. Yeah. Um, are you saying? Um, uh, similar, I think, to what um, Catherine was saying in terms of uh, all uh, five year five um, having it all at the same time. Because yeah, I, I don't know if I, I heard support that. Staggered elections. Staggered, 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 staggered fours. Yeah. Okay. Staggered, good. Staggered, good. She good. supports what the proposal. Okay. okay. I, I, I thought I heard the proposal tonight. Else. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Hi, my name is Julie Mackendorf. I live on Cold Road, Orienta, and I'm a student here at MHS. I believe that by holding local elections every year, we are increasing the quote unquote cost of voting and in turn lowering voter turnout rates. These costs are include conflicts with work, especially those that work multiple low wage jobs, conflicts with family schedules and responsibilities, constant need to get up to speed on various candidates. Nationwide examples prove aligning elections with federal elections, increased turnout, and actually turning out to vote. Is the first step to meaningful political engagement. I urge the board to align with the elections with federal elections. Yeah. Thank you very much. Do you have an opinion on the terms? Length. The length of terms. Four years. Four years? Thank you. Thank you. Like a young woman who knows her mind. Hello. My name is Leticia Pinto. I'm a junior at the Ranch High School. Sorry. Thank you. I'll also be speaking on behalf of the Oak Ridge students who are currently in college. Um, aligning local elections with even numbered years makes it more convenient for future voters like us to consistently get to the polls. It saves us time and effort while also increasing the number of people voting in these important local elections. With more residents voting in even numbered years, which is shown by the data, you're getting a larger and more diverse group of voters. This is good for democracy. Um, do you mind if I repeat that in Spanish? 
Yes, yeah, please. I, I appreciate it. Please. Alinear las elecciones con los años pares es más conveniente para que los votadores en el futuro, como nosotros, voten más. Ahorrarían tiempo y esfuerzo y aumentarían los números de votantes en elecciones locales. Con más residentes votando en los años pares, como lo, demás, demuestran los datos, conseguirían un número mayor y más diverso de votantes. Esto es bueno para la empresa. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have an opinion on the terms? Yes, okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get the reservation. Eight eighteen Woodbine Avenue. Um, here tonight as co-president of the League of Women Voters of Rochmont and uh, And I want to thank you for the opportunity to um, express our views on the proposed legislation. Um, our mission at the League of Women Voters is to empower voters and defend democracy. Uh, and at first, I was uh, planning to just clear the record uh, on the fact that the league has has my fault, my fault, right. my has fault. Not taken a position on the merits <laughs> of the proposed law, and I want to thank Trustee Young for for clearing that up. Um, <laughs> no, I shouldn't have made a mistake to begin with. My fault. Okay, we appreciate the uh, so um, because our part of our mission is to empower voters. Uh, that's led us to the conclusion that uh, although we don't take a position on the merits, we feel strongly that this is an issue that needs to be decided directly by the voters mm -hmm. in a ballot on the uh, in, in a referendum on the ballot in November and in November because that's when it's going to empower the most voters. Mm -hmm. uh, it really doesn't, as we said before, it really doesn't empower voters to have this really, it's an important issue decided by five members of the board and it doesn't empower voters for them to have to go through this uh, process of the per permissive referendum to collect thousands of votes in a very short time. So what's most empowering for voters is to have them decided in November after an opportunity to become educated, as you can see from the people here, there's a lot of confusion, um, you know, and we don't even fully, you know, get all the implications, but um, rest assured, if it is on the ballot in November, or in June, as the case may be, the League of Women Voters will endeavor to um, educate and engage the members of the voting public as, as, as best as we can. And um, so we hope that you will take that into consideration. Say one more thing. I just want I just want to give a shout out to Joe Liberty. Um, who is an incredible asset mm -hmm. to the Marinette yes, and to Larchmont. And thank you for raising up the next generation of civic minds of people. Yes. Do, you, do you have an opinion about uh, synchronized twos or staggered fours? No. no. So we have not taken a okay, okay, okay. On the merits of it. <laughs> okay. Only on the um, way to uh, on the and, way, yes. And, and you mentioned November. Is, is June unacceptable with the primary? If, if, I'm sorry, I'm going to get you out to my house. Okay. If the intention is for the most amount of voters mm -hmm. to be able to vote, it seems logical that the November election will garner much more voting turnout than a June referendum will. And we get few enough voters as it is in the off-year elections in November. I think we'll get a very poor turnout in June, and I would strongly recommend the state. That's fair. That's a persuasive. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, good evening. Hi, I'm Allison May. I live at 536 Monroe Avenue. I am for staggered four years. Um, I think staggered elections would be a good idea because I think continuity is very important. Um, but I am for a referendum in November. I think it's uh, it's onerous online almost to push it to the electorate uh, to get those 2200 signatures or whatever we have to get to get it on the ballot um so i'm definitely for that okay all right yeah thank you, thank you. Uh, i'm just trying to wrap my mind around the staggered four years staggered four years no i, mean, no, I understand okay. it I'm, I'm talking about as a mechanical operation right if if, if uh, whoever wins in 23, right, 
well, that would that would that would that would saddle us let, with another off year election. Let, let me get it. it. It might be best whoever wins in twenty three to start this in a, a to start this process in if we do it that way in a gubernatorial year, and then just go every gubernatorial year. Meaning. So not so you, you, there's an election in 23, right? 24 is the presidential year. Yeah. So you can't have two people elected uh, for a one year term. Oh no, no, but 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 we'd be a uh, the three. No, 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 but, but you you want to have all five people at the same time. That's not a stack. No, no, that's, that's not a stack. Oh, that's 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 two. Oh, see, oh, see what? Yeah. Two years. I was thinking about it every four years. Everybody said, "Yeah, no, no it, it makes your brain hurt." Yeah, you know. Right. So if you have two, I got you know, no, I got you, Alec. I got you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Think about it. it's, um, it's important for continuity. And you, and you, you serve a four year term, right? Sorry. You serve a four year term. Okay. I will. You this will. term was for one. Are you for the remainder. She's running yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Running again. I, I have a question. Um, do you prefer? Do you recommend staggered four year terms? On the even years or on the odd years, and cycle with the town, count, and county elections. I, I think that you'd have to figure that out. I, I don't know. Maybe the League of Women Voters would have a, some sort of analysis or help. They can no, I just there were there were comments tonight about how it's more convenient to vote just in the even years, but in reality, even if we make this change, we will still have town elections in both the towns of Marinick and the towns of Rye. And our county legislator every two years, and then every four years we have our county executive. So even if we, the board of trustees, is elected in even years, there are going to be voters should be voting in That's the odd right. years too. Right. That's but, right. But yeah. you know, we're, we're talking about getting out the maximum turnout for the village of Mamari. We're not worried about the town of Mamari, which very rarely has a contested election. But I don't remember in the past twenty years the town of America had a contested. And, and, and there are there are movements to synchronize uh, to the federal schedule on on all levels. There's there there are very few movements to to go to go to odd number years. Well, there's no movement in the county and the town of Rye. Well, okay. um, perhaps they'll follow our lead. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. So um, first of all, thank you for letting us vote on it. More, I, I did like your proposal. And I'm also with the others who said, since the whole purpose of this is to empower voters, we should empower voters and let them vote in November when they vote. We'll be voting in November. So that makes sense to me. Um, I, I have a couple of comments. I think generally what we should do to proceed is we need to educate the voters on, it seems we're voting on two things. One thing we're voting on is should the term be two years or four years? And the second thing we're voting on is what years we should be voting on. Mm -hmm. Those should be two separate measures and the voters should understand and giving contrasted opinions. Um, maybe we can do something I was thinking in June when the students that are back, we all think our students are at MHR are the smartest in the world. They'll be back from college, let them explain it. And then there are some people who have alternative opinions on these and let them come in and explain to citizens, maybe we can do a Zoom session. Uh, but I, I have some personal opinions. Um, I think you're elected to serve two years and a lot of our elected constituents are elected to serve two years and people decide to run for Congress, knowing full well that they are gonna have to run every two years. Every member of Congress around the country, uh, our state assembly, person, pop quiz, who knows who that is. You vote for him every two years, but Steve Otis, he runs every two years. And Catherine Parker, who is our county legislator, runs every two years. So the point being, you know, let the voters decide. There, there are, um, there's precedent for both. A lot of people like the ability to have accountability, especially given uh, how things have gone in the village more recently. So I think it makes sense to do two. Now, on the other issue of odd versus even, um, I just want to make everyone aware our county legislator, uh, who is Catherine, is about to term out after 2023. So in 2025, a new Democrat will be running. Also in 2025, because we also do our county legislator every four, excuse me, our county exec every four years, uh, George Latimer will be leaving and we will be running a new Democrat. 
So while I understand the spirit of maybe wanting to do it on odd years, we are an important sea of blue as a Democrat in the village of Mamaroneck. And those of us who have lived, I've lived here for um, three decades, not so long ago, like before Trump, our county executive was Rob Astorino. Uh, our, the first time Catherine ran in 2013, she barely won against a Republican. So taking the sea of blue and moving them to an even year might seem on its face, you know, to be something that helps uh, in terms of getting people to the ballot. But people came out for George, people come out for Catherine, and those are important seats for us to keep in terms of our well-being here as citizens. So I think we need to slow down. There's no rush for this. I think we can vote in November. It can give citizens a time to get educated on these various issues, on two years versus four years. Uh, my, my personal opinion is two years, and my personal opinion is we are better on odd years uh, because we need to protect these seats as Democrats, especially in 2025. Um, but again, thank you for listening to the voters. And I, I'm hoping that a lot of the people uh, that wrote emails were not comfortable in coming in person. I want to address that separately and ask that we consider as well as part of this referendum that we're putting to voters in November, an anti-bullying referendum. I can tell you that a number of people who wrote you emails were concerned about coming in person. Uh, they have been screamed at, at. They've watched this happen. Um, you're laughing. Yeah, because it, 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 it's it's it, political theater. That's what you're doing right now. This is political theater. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's kabuki is theater. A, you're here to talk. About, you're here I'm to here talk to about, talk about local the law. Voters no, no, I'm sorry. Here, it's, it's not. You don't represent theater. them. You're here to talk about the local law. Please keep okay, coming to me. Okay, I'm myself. Okay, fine. Thank you. I think. Be that it would make sense in this village to have an anti bullying. You're talking over me, right? Excuse me? Please go ahead. I think a lot of citizens that wrote to you were concerned about being here in person because of that kind of exchange. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, suppresses our democracy. It didn't start here, like Norm had an issue with it as well, but you have an issue with it, Lou has an issue with it. And I think we need to hold, this doesn't happen in village of Larchmont. It doesn't happen in the town of Mamaronek. And I think people would like to have some sort of anti-bullying referendum that would say something about how things are handled in meetings as well as how things are handled online. But not with can, your personal I'm accounts, not, but- I'm sorry, but you're not addressing the issue. You're, you're going off base. This is well, about. It is, is kind of off base, but I'm here. Yeah, and okay, I just okay. think it's something that needs to be merited. A lot of people are not here because of that. Okay. It seems like we have a lot of people here. I, I, can I, I'd like to make two comments. One, I thank, thank you for your comments. That's actually three. Um, I think all of the comments that we received via email should be assembled and put in the next iteration of this conversation because mm -hmm. it looks to me there is going to be another iteration. So I know they aren't technically public comments at the at the hearing because yeah. they weren't here but um th those people should be should be encouraged we should include those comments i will also say i get a lot of comments from people who are echoing exactly um what amy said and that people don't want to come to these meetings because they're it's unpleasant that, that they see people being treated unpleasantly and don't want to put themselves out there and um you know People don't want to be a part of this because they feel uncomfortable. So I I, I think okay. an answer, I, I don't think that Amy is incorrect. And I think that we should all be written. That was another one of those kinds of comments, Tom. We should all be mindful and respectful of one another and allow people to say what they want to say. And not and and and, and not be sarcastic or dismissive of anyone. No, truth matters. It did, Nora. Truth, truth matters. matters. Context matters. Uh, truth matters. The League of Women Voters supports my proposal. George Latimer supports my proposal. You're out of order. Neither of those You're out of order. Oh, excuse, I'm sorry. George, George does not support the, support the idea of... He doesn't support your proposal. So let's talk I about spoke to George and he said... He, right. If he's I'm not, not here to... I'm not to argue with you. If he's not even here to say either or... If he's not here to say either or... 
then we, that. if he's not Just here to that. say either, or, if we can move forward. If we can move forward, because at the end of the day, it was based upon the the comment, the um, public comment section is based upon what you feel, and we can't speak on behalf of somebody else who is not here. Correct. No, you can't. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm listen, clear on what I just it, asked. It, it, as. This is very apparent that part of this is an orchestrated political attack, and that's fine. You know, I've been here a long time. I've been through other political attacks. And Nor is that doing the same thing I said. Yes, and, 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 and how, how surprising is that? Can I, can I say something? <laughs> I, will, I will wait until the last person. I'll wait until you say something. Morning, yes. morning, morning, yes. So, uh, my name is Christine. I've been a resident of Maranek since 2004. Uh, it's the first time I ever come here. And I only come for one reason, because I want to be sure that voters mm -hmm. are heard. And I want to avoid a permissive, uh, I think the, permi the permissive referendum. Mandatory is what you want. You um, want a mandatory. No, it would be a permissive. No, that permissive, we, you know, that yeah. was Discussing. I don't know if it's true or not true, but I had read that it was maybe going to go to a permissive referendum. That really scared me as 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 just a voter. You know, I've been a, a poll worker at Mamaronek a few times, so I really care about democracy and I really care about voting. I don't know two years, four years. I let people decide. I, I'm fine with either way. I will plot either way. What I want is that people decide. So I want the referendum. I want it in November, and I want as many as people as possible to, to participate. Not a Jew, not permissive. Just give the people the possibility to speak their voice, and then majority wins. Thank you. And that's a valid point because the whole point of this is to have more people participate. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Helen Rafferty. I live at five twenty two Prospect Avenue in Mamaroneck. I've lived here for thirty years. Um, I think that the students' efforts to um, get as many people in the community active in our political process is a wonderful idea. I uh, don't know enough about political process to say how it should be worked out or when it should be voted on. I would be very, very happy for it to be a public referendum. I will also say that I, I am not a political ally of Amy's. I am not her political party, but if I was here in the exchange that she just had with this group here, I would cry because I'm a crier. <laughs> so I think if maybe bullying is the wrong term, mm -hmm. but that exchange showed an absolute lack of civility. And I am not going to pin that on any one person. Um, perhaps it is a process issue rather than a personality issue. And that a process needs to be introduced into these proceedings mm -hmm. so that people don't get into these exchanges that are wildly unpleasant and uncomfortable for the rest of us to sit here and listen to. Um, I'm not tough enough, so I am not going to engage in further political discussions with this group. Um, and I would say that a civility initiative maybe is, is something that we could all benefit from. It makes us all feel more comfortable talking to each other and just let us know how to talk to each other. Fair enough. I think the problem is that people on both sides here are getting personally offended mm -hmm. and feeling personally attacked. And mm -hmm. it should be not about the person, it should be about the process. So I would support and would love to be a part of any discussions about how do we restore civility to what is often becoming a very uncivil back and forth. And I would never want to be up there late at night having people tell me what's wrong with me. Couldn't do that however. So I want great respect for you <laughs> for the work you take on, for the responsibility you take on. But the way things go to walk in here does have to change. And I'm not speaking for anybody else but myself, but I think this um, village does amazing things when we get together and we would just say, let's stop blaming and shaming each other and let's work together to help all of us be better. I think we could do it. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Okay, because I've been there. Good night. Thank you. I was here a number of times in the past year speaking at this podium, and I recall one evening I was here and I said, try to remind everybody up there that regardless of whether you agree or disagree with the person who is speaking at this podium, they deserve your respect, they deserve you to listen to them. If you don't agree, you say thank you. When you ran, I'm 
not going to, I know you're not supposed to address anyone individually, but I would say, and I recall some years ago when somebody was running, their platform was people who speak here deserve respect. I will always uh, allow somebody to say their piece and respect what they have to do, whether I agree with them or not. Unfortunately, I think that has kind of disappeared. And I think it's very unfortunate. And I, I think it's sad. Said that somebody can't come up here and you simply say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, goodness gracious. Sorry, I didn't mean to, but I, I wanted to say something, but I was going to wait till everybody finished. <laughs> okay, you, you, go, go. you go ahead. You go ahead. So, John Luster, um, 304 Prospect Daily. And in full transparency, I'm a Democratic district leader, and I see a lot of us here, and in, some on the dais, some in the attorney seat over here, and some in the audience. So, including Mallory, who is also a Democratic district leader. So, I just wanted to make sure I put that out there. Um, my opinion is we should definitely be putting this forward for a referendum, um, and you know. Uh, in November at the normal time when people turn out. We had a series of referendums at the last election. Everybody felt like that worked out the way they wanted it to work out. So, you know, I, I think it's a system that seems to work. Um, ironically, uh, I was a board of trustees member and in the 15 years or so since I was on the board, four trustees, or members of the board have resigned, which means we couldn't find trustees to even serve two terms, two year terms to completion, let alone imagine the number of people that will have to resign when we go to four year terms. I think it's something that we have to anticipate moving forward because the number of people resigning in my opinion will go up because we, we have not been able to have that. I mean, I, I think Tom knows. Um, the village, there are 23 villages in Westchester County, and there is only one village that has four year terms. And that village is Harrison, which is actually a co terminus town building. So, you know, we're acting like this would be a cost savings when, in reality, as Nora said, the elections are happening anyway. Um, and we can't find people to fill out two-year terms, let alone four-year terms. Um, I, I just honestly think that moving ahead with a referendum is the best way to do this. Whatever we decide, four-year terms, two-year terms, if you want to put a two-year term on the referendum, you know, a, a three-year term on the referendum for members and stagger it. A lot of communities that have uh, have different terms for their mayor and for their board. Some communities, in fact, have two-year terms for the mayor and three-year terms for the village board, um, which you know seems difficult, but they seem to manage. And I will say that the cost savings in the the idea that turnout would be increased. Uh, one community, Port Chester, which has three-year terms because of a uh, court-mandated uh, situation. Uh, Dennis Pilla, who was the mayor at the time, basically said it actually didn't increase their turnout. So I, I don't know what the solution is, but um, I do encourage you to put it on for a referendum in November. I, I think that, that's the safest bet for everybody. You know, John, uh, the, uh, Harrison has two-year mayor. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And four year and four year trustees. Four year, and and a five term term limit. We have no term limit here. Yeah, I mean those are all things that could be put on circuit referendums. Mm -hmm. I, I would encourage that. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Comments from the board. I yeah, well, I just comments, I guess, for the whole community. <laughs> oh, um oh. I I wanted to be respectful and wait for every um, individual who was in attendance to make their comments. And knowing that, um, 
knowing that this is definitely something that the three of us who just got elected, uh, Manny, Lou, and myself, that this is something that we believed in because one, we believe in our students, we believe in our young people, and two, we thought it was, or think it is a good idea in terms of voter participation, as well as in the, the increasing of the terms it took from two to four, it does help the individual who is sitting in this space. Um, for people who have run, who people who have tried to run for a position, if you know what it takes to run a campaign, and one in this community, I can't speak for other communities, it's tough. It's very tough. You have opposition, you have nastiness, you do have, treat, you're treated unpleasant. You are, you can't find people. You can't find people because one, if we don't educate people on what the process is to run for an, as an elected official, what this position entails, everything in, in between, whether it's this community, whether it's for um, elected official for this municipality, or we're asking people to run for our school board. We are lacking. We don't have people volunteering. So yes, then you'll get the same same people. I get it. If you don't want it, you, you want two years because God forbid, if we had somebody here for four years that we don't want, We've, I've sat through plenty of presidents that I don't like had done nothing for me and my people. But people decide that they're gonna run. But if they're not given information, if they don't give a, if they're not given a chance, and especially if for the people who are on committees in our community, if you're not even reaching out to them and doing your own due diligence, and then for the people who do decide to run, there are comments that come out that are unpleasant. Yeah, people are going to get turned away. And then you're going to get the same people who continuously run and run and run. I'm, I'm, I don't even, I believe we all could do better at the end of the day. I believe that we, the four-year terms allows the individual who's coming into the space, especially if you are new, time to adjust, time to get things done, time to even adjust your mindset. I came off of a rigorous primaries to go into a, a rigorous uh, um, a, a general election of November and into the seat. And what are we like two, what, almost, almost three months in and I'm still trying to get my footing. I just, this session, this work session was able to put something on the work session. You need time. So if I have to think about running for next year, which I will do if I get the chance, that's gonna take up, that's, that's time. So I just want people to be mindful, not just of like for in terms of the residents, because I, I do appreciate everybody's um, opinion. I don't mind this going for a referendum because I believe that it's up to the voters because if we truly wanna go for, you know, it, it being about what we say in terms of good governance, yes, it should go to the people. Yes, it should. But please be mindful that when you're thinking about it, anything that we vote on in this community, anything you have an opinion about, have the opinion, not just for your hate for somebody, but for the facts and the reality. And understand, because one thing I said when I took this, when I swore, I said, please give us grace. Because it's not all times am I going to be perfect and have the perfect answer. Because I may change my mind and it could be swayed by your, 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 your stance. And if you're as passionate as you are based upon fact, not hate, we can get things done. So, and one thing that was said about um, uh, uh, the board and, you know, and, and behaviors, yeah, and past and possibly present, there's a lot of, you know, unnecessary uh, chatter, but gun and harass, if we were talking about bullying, it can go both ways. 
it can go both ways. So be mindful of that. And I'm done. Because God knows you don't want me to go on and on about what happened during my election, me running last year and all the comments that I got. But I will not do that. Some of them are here tonight. Got that right. Not even was so. I mean, I think Leilani painted it, you know, perfectly. When we think about moving two to four, you have to think we've been here for three months and we said that she just got something on the work session. It takes time. It, you don't, we don't immediately come in and just, you know, are able to just pick everything up. It takes time to adjust, to learn, to understand before you can really feel like you're making an impact. It's a lot of time. You have, people have to understand that we don't do this full time, but it is a full, it is a full time. Full -time yeah, yeah. Well, have mercy. You always, have to, you always have to train emails after you reach to the residents that come in and sit in these long meetings. And we do it because we care about our community, but to think that we have two years and we can and barely get something done, I have to constantly be thinking now, okay, great, I'm gonna have to run an election, run for a re-election and something about that at the end of this year is insane. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, you know, get to all the things that I have promised or told people I think I would I would want to get done to better our community. So I think we have to think about one, the toll it takes on somebody who comes and runs up here. And this is not for everybody, but the people who do do it, you have to think of the toll it takes on the body, the mind, to want to go in and you know serve their community and get anything done. Government takes a long time. Two years is not nearly enough time, especially when you're new to this. We have to start thinking of the board of boards as these exclusive clubs with people who have the time to come here and come up here and do this. I'm a young person, I'm 25 years old. I, I, I love my community and I have a full-time job with this and a full-time job outside of this. And to think that it can only be people who kind of have worked their entire lives and have the free time to kind of answer and be present to be around, it's it's not that. It's people like me, it's young people who want to come up and advocate for their com community, but they don't have the chance because it's of the, the commitment. But, you know, it's like I said, it's not for everybody. And this is something that is for me. And I really believe that it's it's time to kind of make that change. Two years is not enough time. There's a lot of things that are wrong with our community today. And I mean, another nine that's going to come up is uh, later on our agenda is our capital plan, which is insane to think about that. This is something that happened in the past few years, but we look at our community's infrastructure, we look around our community and see things in disarray. Thing, look at this, look at this building we're sitting in. We have a horrible police department that our our you know officers have to work out of. We have this courtroom that's not in good shape. This whole building's not in good shape. We have all our municipal pieces in multiple places instead of being housed in one. We have to think about it. That's not gonna get done in two years. For all we know, we could this could be something that say we didn't pass. It could, you know, a year from now, and and if we don't come back, we have a brand new board. It's back to the drawing board, and this is something that we cannot continue to kick the can down the road and think that two years is enough time for a board to come in when we know every two years that can change and that can be shuffled. So I really believe this. It's it's very important that you know I hear the residents, I hear their advocating. They don't think it's a good idea, and they think that we need to stick to this kind of two year staggered schedule and having an election every year. But that's not healthy for the people who are running, and it's not healthy for our residents to, to expect things to get done. But that's all. Well, and let me not, I'm sorry, <laughs> let me not even forget. The most important thing is inclusion when we're talking about our community members. And if you look around today or tonight and whoever was in the room, the people that we really are trying to get to are not even represented. Not even here. One, we got a language problem. We, get, we not of all of our stuff is 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 in Spanish or in, in a bilingual state. And then two, how we? I, my whole thing is sometimes we can't wait to for people to come to us. We have to go to them, and let's not be too lazy to go to people when they need it. Not everybody has these beautiful schedules that where, like, and I know I don't. I honest to God, I'm like what. You think I want to be up here all the time? <laughs> like it, it, the amount of the amount of work that it takes to do this job, I did not know, but I am. I appreciate. I appreciate it all, with all my heart and soul. I do appreciate this this space that we all get to sit in. We all get to sit in. But if we want to make sure that our board continues to be diverse, or be inclusive. We got to start doing some work and change is going to be inevitable because change is evolution. It will be hard, but not all change is bad. Change is good too. 
Remain, remind yourself to be balanced. Oh, yeah. I just want to thank. Sorry. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, I want to thank everybody who came, spoke on the issue, on the issue that was before us, uh, what the public hearing was about. Thank you. But at the end of that, you saw kind of an illustration of why having an election every year is toxic. Because at the end of it, you know, it, it, it turned into the kabuki theater of a blatant political, you know, attack. And he stopped talking about what was going on on the agenda. And, you know, it was, you know, I'm running this year and I understand it and I'm fine with that. But as I've been down this road before, I've been sitting up here a long time. People know who I am. They chose to go another way. I'm happy with that. That's the decision. But this is what we deal with all the time. And it was mentioned, and I just want to point out that last year uh, when these three trustees were running, the first time I can ever remember uh, the Democratic Party tried to throw three Democrats off the ballot, two of whom, two of whom were district leaders, members of the own committee that they sat on. One of them who's here and, tonight. And they tried, no, two of you were district leaders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know. One of the people. The, the, <laughs> two of you are district leaders that your own committee tried to kick you off. The first majority, minority, people of color board, the, the ballot that this community has ever had. And they did not get the nuance of using picayune and procedural electoral issues to knock you folks off the ballot. How just you know, glaringly you know, uh, wrong that was on so many levels. And you all persevered and you had to go to court to retain your rights. And I admired you all for doing that. And then you were validated by the voters, both in the primary and in the election. And then here it is, you know, the election season starts again, a couple of months later. This is exactly what I was talking about in my email. And we will go through the whole process this whole year and there'll be another election in 23. And if the law doesn't change, we will go through the whole process starting in the beginning of the year. And, you know, with the advent of social media, uh, you know, it, it, it allows, you know, negative uh, bullying, bullying, bullying. Uh, to, to manifest itself. And people say things on social media that they would never say to anybody else's face. And uh, you know, it, I, I got off a couple of sites because I just, I, I didn't need the aggravation in my life anymore. And, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not a perfect person. I, I have, yes, lost my temper at times, <laughs> but I, I believe I lost my temper because I was standing up for the village. Now, you can, you can disagree with me or agree with me, that's fine. But I, I'm definitely not perfect. I'm human and I've been up here uh, a long time and I, I, I challenge anyone to point out an elected official in this community that's worked harder. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I find it uh, amazing that people had to fight for what they were entitled to from, you know, members of their own party who should have been helping them. And then even after they won the primary, got no help. And, you know- Two front rule a war before you know, two front rule. Two, you know, to, to have, you know, a woman uh, speak here tonight who's been very active in the village, not know who the leaders of the Democratic Party are, it, it speaks to who we are. And, 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 and I love being a Democrat. I'm a Democrat in my heart. I registered as a Democrat at 18. Uh, I, I can't remember ever voting for the other party. Uh, that's just who I am. And, you know, although I have friends in the other party, but uh, you know, I, I, I was deeply, deeply disturbed. And uh, truthfully, that, that's why I, I didn't ask for my party's endorsement. I'm gonna ask for the voters of my party's endorsement oh. because I, I, I didn't wanna be involved in a situation where people uh, who would do that to fellow Democrats, you know, to, yeah, to give them you know, credence in that. So yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. And, and, and the one thing we, we heard talk about bullying, there were bullies at the podium tonight. And that's all I'm gonna say. Not all of them hung around. Yes, Robert. Well, welcome back, Robert. Um, I'm one of those people that you're talking about. Yes, you are. Yeah, you are. I, I am. And I'd like to 
give some more background. You, you gave a kind of a one-sided view of this situation. I'd like to give the other side. View. Um, when you collect petitions, there is a proper way to collect valid signatures. In fact, please let me finish. Um, later this month is going to be a, a Zoom meeting from the Board of Elections in Westchester, explaining how that process, how you go about collecting valid signatures. In the primary, the way primaries and general elections go, when you have contesting parties, each side foils the signatures of, let me finish please. And our side foiled the signatures that you that were collected and found a number of what appeared to be invalid signatures. The process requires that you collect this together, you send it to the Board of Elections. The Board of Elections evaluates your uh, findings and determines whether in fact there are um, so many invalid signatures that those candidates could be removed from, from the slate. And that's what happened. It wasn't individuals, it was the Board of Elections that made the decision to remove candidates mm -hmm. because they were. I would also point out mm -hmm. that your slate and, and your representative, representative of you, foiled the signatures of the other Democrats. They did. Excuse me, I'm, I'm speaking. Oh, you foiled the signatures. Had you found that there are enough invalid signatures, you can bet your bottom dollar, you would have done this. You see, you're anxious to speak. I am anxious because I'm telling you it wouldn't have happened. No, we wouldn't have done it. Please, please. You say it wouldn't happen. Why would you, why would you? Robert, please finish. And I'll, and I'll explain to you, I'll explain to you myself. And I can give you the name of the person because I, I don't know why you're smiling. Please finish. Uh, had you found enough of that invalid signatures for the other slate, you would have done exactly the same thing. Yeah, you, How, however, our signatures, we did not have, we had enough valid signatures that, that didn't happen. I would also point out that this past week I was listening on the radio and I was listening, I heard a kind of a documentary about Barack Obama. I don't know if you're aware of this. When Barack Obama was running for his first political campaign in Chicago, he was in a primary with another African-American candidate. He challenged that person's signatures. That person had to be removed. Barack Obama was asked about that, and he said, look, that, that's politics. That's how that works. If you want to run for office, you have to comply with the law in collecting valid signatures. If, if you want to come? Yeah, I, I would. I'll, I'll, I'll listen. Uh, listen. Uh, this is not the, none of the, the When we had to go to court, and you went to court yes. opposing, when they had to go to court, you went to court opposing. Right? You, 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 so it wasn't just the board of elections. You went to court, and at court, the judge himself said that there was no fraud. These, these were these were people who, when they signed, they, they signed like that. And you know, so but I just want to get to what you folks had to do because you had to foil the signature cards of hundreds and hundreds of people and compare them to what happened. Right? Because that's no, how it works. No, when, Robert, when, when, I've been doing this. Robert, stop, signs, stop. Signs, you asked me. I've been doing this for 24 years. I have never done that. I have never done that. Well, you've done it before. And, and it, Which it goes to that level. Let's see what you have. One of you speak at it, it one goes time to that level. Yeah, don't bring it up to you. I'm just bring it, bring it up. It goes to that level of, you know, avoiding elections. That I, you know, I have had people say well, we can challenge us, and I've said I don't want to challenge. I want to have an election. That's what we're here for. That's what parties are here for. But, and what you're saying is, you, you're admitting that the Democratic Party did that to other Democrats. Usually, you do it to the other side. That's how it works when you when you are running for a political campaign. Uh, also, as I, I said, your side, Amy Weinberger. 
Okay. Who's Debbie Weinberger? Uh, I'm sorry. May I make may a comment? May, may I make a comment? Yeah, anyway, this, this doesn't comment. matter. May I make a comment? Go ahead, yeah. Um, it's nice to finally see him. The reason him. why I brought up the last election is because it's important to the overall reason as to why I was, I'm for the four year, um, four year term moving from two year to four year. And I also brought it up because there's there was concern as to why people do not possibly run for an election. Now, there's also some other things that while you were up here stating that we there are things that are missing, right? In, in terms of facts, there's a lot of things that are missing from the story. So rather than prolong this, this, because I don't want to quote people, rather than prolong this, if we can go, get to the agenda. <laughs> and while I totally understand what you're saying, you want, you need to clear your side of the story or the side of, hold on, clear the side of the story, whatever it is, because there's many, there's many, there could be a lot of versions. And yes, people contest and I can, I can, I can go toe to toe with people all day, but that's, this is not it. And if you want, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you to stop Robert, I'm really not, but I'm just saying like, if we are able to move forward, I was giving my opinion based upon what was on the agenda in terms of talking about the extension of the um, election term. Does this I have to do with that? To, if you were painting a portrait, I know who I am. Great. You were painting a portrait that I was. I didn't say your name, though. I, I understand. But I, I, you said in the board. So say the board. I and I just wanted other people to understand that there's more to it. The way you presented it was it was a simple um, bad act. And, and I just wanted to explain that it was more complicated and that it was the Board of Elections that made that final decision. So well, of course they did. And, and, and I, I agree that it was a very unfortunate uh, for a lot of reasons. But I, I just felt like you were sending criticism my way that I needed to kind of give the other side. Thank you. And it was Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for clearing. It was an unfortunate situation. I agree with you. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's go. Thank I, you. I also, so, what I didn't hear from you, okay. uh, Leilani, mm -hmm. is I had made a comment about the way some people on the board treat people to speak up. I would love to hear you say that you agree that if somebody comes up here and they speak and it's different than what somebody would like to hear, you simply say thank you. You, you, don't, you don't criticize them personally, you don't attack them. I would like you, you to agree that that's the way people should be treated when they come to the podium and speak. I'd like to hear you say that. Well, I would say, and as I stated before, I said that it goes both ways because one thing I'm not gonna also accept, I'm not gonna accept somebody to be able to talk to me any type of way when they, and, and I think it goes both ways. Hold should. on, as I shouldn't, and as you shouldn't. And I also stated that there's, there may be some um, dysfunction when it comes down to how people, all people talk to each other. I did state that. So I'm not going to just say one way without saying another because we do that a lot around here. It goes both ways. I talk about balance all the time, all the time. And I, and I'm talking, but I'm giving, I'm giving you my, but, and I stated that, I stated that. And you just want me to give one answer when I've given both. So, Robert, I can't give you exactly what you want because I talked about both. I talked about uh, both. And just to end, and just, uh, I agree it with is. you. I think that there needs to be some way that we can kind of learn fences of and course. work together. I'm looking forward to do that. Of course. And, and I too. there were things that went on on both sides. We mm -hmm. used to criticize. Yeah. Yeah. There, were, there were good people on both sides. Yes. 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 Thank you. I, I, the one thing that I wanted to say is Lou, and, and I regret saying this, you recall last year 
at the end of a meeting, when you and I were sitting right there, and you said F you to me. Uh, you were calling you were, me. Uh, uh, all right, uh, Robert, 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 please sit down. Yeah, this is this is getting ridiculous. Okay, right. don't want to sign. Well, come on. Second grade. Do we need to make this? I need to make a motion to close the public hearing. Yeah, I need a motion to close the public So hearing. moves. <laughs> Second. Augie, call the roll. Trustee. He's rolling? Yes. Yeah, is it yeah. Reed? Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Now, if no one makes a motion to adopt the law, the law will just die. Uh, no. Well, no, well, no, no, wait. No. I, I, think, uh, uh, I think what we want to do is send it back to. Well, we've opened and closed the public hearing. Yes. Okay. All right. But just let me explain it. Okay. We opened and closed the public hearing. The options are taking no action, mm -hmm. voting yes on it, and voting no on it. Okay, well, before we vote no on it, I have questions for Bob then, all right? Okay, but all right. This just, we could ask Bob to redo another law, and this will- All right, right. well, Bob, okay. Bob, so here's, here's the question. You postpone your action to another meeting. You've held the public hearing. You don't have to act tonight. Okay, well, I, I think we, 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 we want to act tonight. So the question is, um, uh, if, we, if, if we have a, uh, a referendum on this, is it possible to have a referendum, yes or no, on on elimination of off-year elections, and then if yes, do you want two or four-year terms? Is that is that is that something we could do? No, no. Yeah. I, I think we should just you know just ha I think we should table this, go back to a, uh, a uh, work session, and work these issues out okay. instead of trying to work it out right, right. here right okay. now. Let's, let's, let's have, see. I would say we have in order if we were gonna if we don't vote on this, I guess. At any time, we could vote on this. We could vote it up or down, right? So, I mean, if, once the hearing is held and closed, yeah, we don't have to re-notice it. We could vote it up or down, it, unless the form changes. Right. All so, right. so, 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 so it, it remains on the table. Remains on the table. Fine, that's fine. I would make a motion that we vote this down. Right, that we vote to not adopt the law as said, so that we don't give ourselves the option of adopting this law without having any without tying it to any kind of a referendum. Well, well I, I, no, I can re address that. I would do that except for the fact that last year when we attached the referendum to the same law, uh, I was hoping we, we would get you, you, you to go along with it and you voted it down anyway. So I want to keep this on the table. You know what I'd like to I would like to clarify that right. we had kind of a, a vague law. You wanted to say yes or no. There was other discussion on the table and you didn't want to discuss it. So instead of actually thinking about what kind of law we might pass, it was a very limited scope and then it was over. I have recommended that we add term limits. Um, well, anyway, but 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 having said that, I'm making a motion that we vote no on the proposed law that we just held a public hearing in. If I get us if there's a second, can we vote on it? If not. Then it can be adopted at any point. So if we second it, then we can sit there. So and you, 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 you can't make a motion to vote no. You would make a motion to vote on the bill. Okay, yes. right. I'm saying I make a motion to. Okay, you're right. I make I make a motion that we vote. And if we vote yes or no. No, there's no second. So if there's no second. Oh, exactly. yeah. I'm not hearing a second. The motion dies. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Spolzino uh, to create uh, possibly two laws, uh, one staggered term, four years, right, like we have here with the referendum, and the other uh, all five, one year, like uh, not one year, all five in the same. Uh, Synchronized two years. Synchronized two years. Yeah. Yes. Like everybody, uh, everybody, let's say presidential election year. Okay. And, and so then, that would meet and the, then two years after that, everybody again in, in the gubernatorial. So yeah. that would that would meet the needs of the individuals who so, came up and stated that yeah, okay. they'd rather have the two years. Yeah. Yes, but, um, but it would just be all at once. But you're all determined to do it on the even on the federal and and on yes. the federal side. I, I, the, the idea that uh, you know there's going to be nobody voting uh, for the for the county executive or for the county uh, legislator because we're not having election is. Not how politics works. Yeah. Politics works the other way. I mean, sometimes, sometimes, no, sometimes, the I, sometimes I mean, if you look at turn, look at the turnout this year, it's going to be a business. Sometimes in the village of Mamaroneck, 
there are more there there have been more votes in a local election than for a county legislator. Could that be? Could that be? I, you know, could, could that? I'm just saying. Could that be because um, of possibly the individual who is going up, like who's who's running? Because I think when when people feel that they're represented, then they'll go out to vote for that person. But if people don't feel that they're represented, then they'll just let it go to the wayside. Well, we we don't know what the motivation of voters in any of these cycles is. We just know what the what the, what the numbers are. I, I, no, I'm, I'm just, a motion, I'm just saying, could it be? I make a motion that this board uh, uh, goes on the record um, uh, being in favor of even year elections and abolishing off year elections, and we move forward from there. Do I have a second? Say that again, I'm sorry. I move this board goes on the record as supporting even year elections, eliminating off year elections. That, that, that's our position and then we're going forward. That, 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 that's, that's, my, that's my motion. So, so is the motion so, to, to ask the village attorney to create laws that reflect that? Yes. So as amended by what I just said, I would second that motion. Okay, all right. Or you call. Contingent upon there being referenda. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Trustees Rowling? Yes. You guys are read? Um, yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Lucas? No. I don't think we should have, I think we should stay on the odd cycle. Okay. Yeah. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All right. And I make a motion that any referendum that this board consider be set for November, where yes. there's definitely going to be more turnout than the June primary. I'll second that motion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Roll. <laughs> Trustee Rowland? Yes. Trustee Yazeri? Yes. Trustee Young? No. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All right. So at the yeah. risk of prolonging this, can I clarify? <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. What? <laughs> I have a few more motions. Well, the, the, the majority <laughs> voted to, please keep it down in the back. The, 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 the majority voted to have four-year elections in the even-numbered years. No. Yeah, that, that's what yeah. you said. Staggered? No, 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 no. I, 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 the motion was to hold elections, to eliminate off year elections and hold them only on even numbered years. Doesn't, it doesn't address, uh, doesn't address the, uh, the terms at all. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that being said, prepare a law for you know, all five every four years and staggered every two years. Okay. But, but the, but the, the overriding number of years, but the overriding consideration is we're getting rid of the off year elections. Wait, all four every four years? No, 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 no. no. Let me just articulate this. One law, all five for four years. All five for four years. Just that's what, I don't think those weren't considered, just assume. And the other, uh, like we do it now, three trustees in an even numbered year. The, the next year, uh, trustee and a mayor. The next year or the next year? The next two years. So even numbered years. It's, always, it's only even numbered years. The stagger for two years. Was that one of the things we wanted to No, look? it's staggered fours or synchronized twos. That's all you got to say. And they're on even years. That's okay, it. That. That's, that, that, that's all it is. Four. Staggered fours or or synchronized twos, even years only. So 24 is election 26. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. A scorecard like a baseball game. I know. It's, it, it, well, I, I thought I understood it until we started explaining it. November reference. November reference. Yes. Which is fine, yeah. oh, but I, I don't. Good. So if it's a November referendum, I don't have to worry about running for a four-year term in twenty-three. Nothing changes this year. Great. Okay. All right. Nothing changes this year. There so, we go. See, that's where they screwed up. They want to get rid of me. They should have said you're running for a four-year term in twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we have a press for the order. You want to invite her up since, since this was part of the maybe. Oh, believe me, we, we probably couldn't make it. No, it wasn't easy to follow. Sorry. Leaving it as it is, or is that should that oh, also yeah, be out. included on the referendum? No, no, the, no. You, you, it's not a Chinese uh, menu. No, no, it, that's out. This lot we've held the. Public. So you're getting rid of no matter what. Well, number the, year or no. Election. So that I'm just trying to understand. Okay, let, let, let's just figure this out. There's no law. We're we're talking about. 
having Bob work on it. Right. Okay. To and propose for the referendum. Right, right. Right. To propose for referendum where there'll be another public be hearing. Right. Yes, yes. There, there you go. Yes. Nothing's changed. No, nothing's changed tonight. Everything's the yeah. same. So there'll, there'll be a work session agenda where we work on it probably a couple of times. Then we'll schedule a public hearing one night. And then subsequent two weeks after that, there'll be the public hearing. No, okay. no, no, it, it's. No, thank you. Thank you for asking for clarity. You know, Peggy, I thought I knew what this was all about until I started to explain it. So there you go. I have a question for Bob that's sort of related. I'm sorry? I have a question for you that's sort of related. Um, even the, 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 the assembly and le the, the state legislature has not modified the quirk about timing of referendum. So we're still going to, no matter what gets decided, it kind of has to wait until July, as close to November as possible. If you want it to be in July, in November. Yeah, but it has yeah. to be to the Board of Elections by roughly August 1st. 10th, you know. First right. week of August, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. But we have to, but we can't so do it time. in two, it, yeah, it, it shouldn't be done too far in advance because of the timing of the 60 days under state law. At least we know where we're going. Who knows if the, they'll change that by June. Okay. Oh, I wouldn't bet on it, but. Oh, they're they were talking about it. They were, at my com, that was one of the, that's something that's being considered. So. I was also, I mean, I, okay. I, I, let, let's go, go, you right. You are so right. Jesus, Jesus. we can go on. I was ready to pack up and go. All right. No. Order the bills. Like the second item. I'll have a blessing. You. you guys can go home. And I and I look forward to the league's input. I really do. Thank <laughs> you. And I'm just a little bird. For all that you. And I'm Mallory. Night. Oh, wait, night. A resolution authorizing budget transfers. Authorizing executive uh, budget transfers to OBU budget accounts. Uh, so it's, uh, I don't want to go through. You, you, you all see the uh, authorizations in front of you? I saw them, yes. Anybody have any questions or concerns? And your motion. Second. Well, uh, no, uh, call the roll. Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Desi Reed? Yeah. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendments. Uh, you all see the, the changes in front of you. Any mm -hmm. questions or concerns? No. no. I need a motion. So moved. Second. All, uh, Augie? Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Guys, you read? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes, nothing's coming from the reserve fund. Things are just being adjusted. Mayor okay. Murphy? Yes. Abstract ordered vouchers tonight. The ordered vouchers is a, a doozy. Uh, $4,804,924.33. Questions or concerns? No. Yeah. Yeah, the only one I have is, is in the uh, in the Medicare distribution. Yeah, there's some stuff in there that just yeah. makes my, but it, we stuck with it, right? Well, so Jerry, the, the last time for a retired trustee, it was a thousand dollars. Now it's five hundred twenty-seven. Is that because two months? Oh, I see. So that okay. so that so now five hundred and forty dollars per month is what we're reimbursing. It. Okay, so that that uh, uh, that the retired trustee gets it will get like is getting like five hundred and some odd dollars uh, a month. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right, all right. Thanks. I just wanted to make sure it was going to be a thousand of you. Five hundred bad. Five hundred is bad. No. <laughs> uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Og. Trustees, Rollings. Yes. Guys, you read. Yeah. Young. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh. Resolution uh, that that's going to be tabled. We, we talked at a work session tonight about uh, uh, wireless telecommunications, and uh, I recommended that we uh, we hire a consultant to look at the contract and to see if we can get a better deal and to look at a couple other issues with it. So that's going to be held. Uh, new business uh, resolution authorizing supplemental appropriation to fund survey work for the Florence Street stormwater. Evaluation and improvement plan. Uh, this has been long overdue for yeah. folks on Florence Street. Uh, any questions or concerns from the board? No, it's way overdue. Okay. Uh, 
So I'm gonna wanna make a motion. This is for $7,950. So moved. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Orgy Paul. Trustees, Worlings? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. You? Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution scheduling a public hearing uh, on PLLC to adopt letter of revision for 1241 Flagler. This is what's called the LOMAR. It's a revision of the flood map uh, that's made by uh, the federal government. And uh, what we will we'll be voting on if we uh, adopt the public hearing is basically to accept uh, the federal government's reinterpretation of the flood map. So moved. Second. And the public hearing uh, will be for February 27th. There's a motion and a second. Augie, call, please. Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Gazzy Reed? Yeah. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution scheduling public hearing on PLLG 2023. Local law to exceed the property tax cap uh, for fiscal year 2023-2024. Uh, what this is really quickly is uh, most municipalities uh, put this law on the agenda, uh, don't pass it, uh, let it expire. But if, if you need to go over the tax cap, you have to pass this law. Yeah. Uh, you know, we haven't gone over the tax cap in a long time, but, you know, it, it's, it's prudent to have the law ready in case uh, you, you have that predicament and uh, you have to exceed the cap by you know some amount it's a tool we hope we don't have to pick up that's right and so we we schedule the public hearing for two weeks from now but we just keep it open until we adopt the budget and then the night we the evening we adopt the budget we either vote yes or no on this law right, thanks all right yeah uh so that's scheduled we're scheduling this for two weeks from february 27th so moved second all in favor all right all right uh scheduling a public hearing a proposed local law to amend chapter one general provisions as it relates to maintaining an electronic copy of the village code and adding a new chapter chapter three as it relates to amendments and publication of the village code we talked about this in work session uh bob you want to give a brief yeah, basically it updates the requirements of the village code with respect to maintaining the village code to a situation that reflects things like publication on the web is more important than publishing in a newspaper. Gotcha. I have a couple just questions. Mm -hmm. And one, um, for section one, um, the village clerk treasurer will make an electronic copy of this code available on the village's website. Um, but that's e-code. Do we meant like a PDF version? Because the, you know, e-code changes. So I think, do we want to have like, like a PDF, like an electronic PDF that kind of is stopped at a moment in time? That's up to you. In my view, my I drafted it to allow the village clerk to determine what he or she thought was appropriate, given, you know, in light of whatever the technology is at the time. As so that there was always some place where someone could go to look at an official version of the village code. So that would be different from e-code? I guess that's my no, question. It would have to be. I mean, I, I think we would prefer to remain with e-code for the simple fact that if every time the board amended the village code, right. for us to you know, pull a PDF, extract pages, insert pages, hope we put them in the right location. I mean, e-code is, I mean, the code is dynamic. Yeah, I, get, I guess. And e-code is a is a thing. So I guess I guess with the paper copy you still keep making changes to it so it's yeah. it's it's kind of live as opposed to being yeah, a, a record. We have two copies in our office. They may want not, paper copy because it keeps getting updated. It's current versus historical. Yes. Um, and then um, one seven um, that they're being repealed. This is section one dash seven of the code. I guess it's right. It's got two sections to it, but the one section is. is I thought R. Okay. And then. Um, how do changes get this is i guess this is the other question how do changes get tracked what do we I mean is, but we have that same problem now because we keep pulling out those sections of the code and putting new sections in the binders yes and there's notes on the bottom that tells you what was superseded right and that'll still be an e-code e-code also maintains a history in, in e-code you'll see it says amended some, such, and such, and such, and such but sometimes sally and i have had to do a deep 
deep dive like into minute books to find stuff if something else gets so okay okay, okay. Uh, we need to okay. we need a motion so moved second Augie okay. Paul Trustee Rowling yes yeah Reed yes. Young yes Lucas yes Mayor Murphy uh, resolution scheduling public hearing on PLLE 2023, amending chapter 36 of the village code, indemnification and defense to limit defense costs. What this is, is uh, we're scheduling a public hearing and it's about uh, only having people, you know, we, we, we had a situation here where the village of Amaranek incurred $147,000 of legal defense uh, for a, uh, a land use board member, and we had no provision to uh, control these courts. Uh, our code uh, allowed uh, unlimited uh, spending on these attorneys. And uh, you know, I don't think any controller in the world uh, would uh, recommend that that be the case. Mm -hmm. So what this law will allow if it's passed uh, to that the person who is, you know, has difficulty and needs a lawyer uh, has can hire a lawyer for the amount that the village attorney charges for litigation plus twenty percent. So I think that that's fair. You know, we tried to do this a few years ago. Uh, I offered uh, a couple of uh, compromises. One compromise was actually twice of what the, the uh, village attorney was uh, getting at the time. And you know, I, I got no takers. And uh, you know, it, you know, we, we're going to talk about being fiscally responsible. You know, this is you know a fiscally limited uh, yeah. measure that you know we have to have. So, so moved. Second. I have a Sorry, question. Um, so, to clarify, um, where the administrative proceeding again? What we let we had this conversation last time and didn't come to any resolution. What would the administrative proceeding be like? An ethics board complaint? I mean, I'm not just, really. What else would it be? What? Um, yeah, that's the principle. So it's basically this: if somebody is, if somebody has an ethics charge against them, this really is just related to the ethics board. It's not related to any other kind of situation. Well, that's hard for me. Definitely the ethics board. We talked about the NLOB. We talked about different other possible contingencies. Yeah, I mean, unless unless another. Yeah, but those they're not enforcement proceedings. They don't have a penalty attached to that. Well, I mean, this doesn't change existing law in that regard. Right, but it's just, it just, but basically this law affects essentially somebody who's defending a, an employee, which would be a volunteer, right? Um, a volunteer board member or commission member or anybody in this room who's brought up on an ethics charge by the ethics board. It's really related to ethics board charges. I just... Well, that, that that definitely was the genesis of it. Okay, is there anything else? Not that I can think of, but that that's not a change from current law. Right. Right. I, right. I, I, I no, it's just. I think one hundred forty-seven thousand dollars on an ethics charge okay. that that doesn't really carry prison time or penalty of uh, money is you know there are people on death row who didn't get one hundred thousand dollars worth of representation. Uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Org. Trustees Rowland? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Uh, resolution scheduling a public hearing PLLF 2023, rescinding chapter 176 of the village code, deeds and adding a new chapter, fees and costs. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, uh, call the roll. No, no, no. I, do Nora, you want to say something? I do. Yeah, I'd love mm -hmm. to. Um, land use application. Um, We've added, I guess we've added an appeal. This was not in the previous definition or an appeal by an applicant to the Zoning Board of Appeals from a determination of the building inspector. That's a new, that's new. We have not, um, that's not in our code previously, although it's not bolded here. And I do not think we should, I think that we should not block residents from challenging an, an interpretation of a building inspector because an applicant has, you know, an upside. Say it again. So an, I, no, just say it again. I just, I don't think we should, be blocking residents from challenging the interpretation of a building inspector because mm -hmm. an applicant has a benefit. Right? It's just uh, it's making them kick off. 
you're basically an applicant to who's asking for a permit gets a permit because they want to do something that improves their property. They're getting a benefit. Mm -hmm. A neighbor might, mm -hmm. and there have been instances in which these things have been overturned. I don't think the neighbor who has no benefit other than a potential detriment to their property from somebody else's mm -hmm. benefit. Did we have a, an exception for, for, uh, for no. con contiguous? Uh... Discussed it, but it's not in there. Oh, well, you know, here's the thing. This is a service. The appeal is a service. Uh, you, you should pay for your service. If you're not, you're, you're, you're putting that cost on every other taxpayer in the village of Mamaron. And uh, that's not fair. You know, we've had some of these that have cost tens, $20,000. We have, and, yeah, we have and, had, and, 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 and we have had some where the village went to court for, you know, a ton of money to defend the residents who challenged a bad determination of the building inspector. Okay. So <laughs> I, that's my point. My perspective is this should happen. Well, yeah, you I, have I a different perspective. I mean, we know how we're going to vote. We, we, right. And we talked about this in work session and you're bringing it up again. So I'm going to bring up my point again. You know, there, there are a limited number of people who have ever done this. Uh, it, you know, and you know, we all know who they are. And, you know, they've recently done one that wasn't even near their house. And, you know, it, 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 it's like open season because it doesn't cost anything. And, you know, it, but it costs us to have lawyers. It, it costs the person who's, you know, the, who's building a uh, permit there, you know, uh, uh, challenging. It costs that person a lot of money. You know, do we not care about that person? Yes. What's in there? But somehow the, the, the board discussed this at its last meeting. Yeah. And added that provision regarding applicants. Somehow what's on the agenda is the old version. Oh, okay. So, so, so there is an exception. What, for contiguous... what Nora is looking at is old. Yeah. What's on the agenda okay. is old. So there is an exception for contiguous landowners. The board's discussion at its last meeting yeah. was that, there, that uh, appellants to the Zoning Board of Appeals would be included among the people who have to pay the cost, except that there would be a cap of a thousand dollars on an right. appeal by someone who was within the notice area, the right, 400 right. foot notice area, mm -hmm. and therefore is presumably personally affected by it. So, mm -hmm. if, if you're next door and you want to challenge the uh, the determination, mm -hmm. you Actually, it shouldn't be the notice area because you, you get a building permit without ever having been noticed. Yeah, we, that's that's. We, I, I put in four hundred feet because that's sort of the standard notice. Right. Okay, within four hundred feet. All right, so yeah. that, so but that that's fine because at least with a thousand dollars, you have some skin in the game. Right. You know, I mean, I, the only thing I was worried about was was, was this this whole vigilante thing. Yeah. People wandering around looking for yeah. stuff. But, but that version isn't before you tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. 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 So then we we can't schedule the public hearing tonight. Right. We'll okay. Back at the next okay. All right. Great. That's fine. All I was looking for is that everybody has some skin in the game. And if you're you know if you're going force town uh, to complain about uh, somebody five miles away, you know you should have to pay the full freight. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't stop them from doing it, right? Yeah. That's will do it. Okay. Right. Got to write a check. Thank you. Thank you for remembering. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm not, I'm not completely confused. <laughs> Good night. Resolution accepting donation of a bench uh, in West Basin Harbor on Park. Uh, this is a, 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 a friend of mine, actually. Uh, Sarah Sheehan uh, no. is, is buying it for her mom. Sorry. Uh, they're long time village residents. You're saying that there's something. There's one before time. There's one before? Yeah. What's going on now? Uh, you you're on page G. yeah. It's, it's it's Danielle Devanzio. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my boy. Uh, Danielle Devanzio uh, is is desiring of uh, buying a bench in Harbor Island Park, uh, which we appreciate, and she's doing it in loving memory of Michelle Latiri and Biscuit. Oh, Biscuit, uh, I guess was her dog. Uh, and we thank her for the donation, $2,241. Price of benches have gone up. Okay. Yeah. It was $1,800 a few years ago. Yeah. Everything's uh, gone up, right? Uh, I will make the motion. Second. Well, trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Guys, you read? Yeah. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, 
Resolution acknowledging of a uniform court order. No, no, then now this is the one from Sarah. Why am I losing here? It's, uh, it's behind the middle bar. It's like probably the flip side. Oh, I see it. It should have been a different item. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whereas Mrs. Sarah Sheehan is desirous of donating a bench to the village of Mimarnik, uh to be placed in Harbor on in honor of Carolyn Freed Feldman, her mom, and Joseph Skip Feldman, her dad, from their children. And this is the same amount, and we'd like to thank the Sheehan family. The Callan family. And I will make a motion. Second. Call. Trustees Rollings? Yes. Jazzy Reed? Yes. Young? Yeah. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution acknowledgement of order to build justice court. Uh, just the, the kind of Davies ordered courts. Uh, Anything of note, Ogie? That's just a requirement from the court system that it's presented to the Board of Trustees. That's okay to me. I'll make a motion. Uh, second. Okay. Well, Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Yaisa Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, uh, resolution authorizing road closures for Memorial Day Parade. Um, Memorial Day Parade, Mimarinic Avenue and Prospect Avenue will be closed, including the closure of Library Lane. Uh, that's on May 28th, Sunday, May 28th. And uh, we meet at Mimarinic Avenue School and we march down to the American Legion here. And uh, the Legion always gives out hot dogs and uh, soft drinks to anyone who shows up. And I encourage you all to show up. I'll make the motion. Second. Paul. Trustees, Rowling? Yes. Yazir Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, we talked about this next item of work session last week, two weeks ago, supplemental appropriation to fund the purchase of police vehicles. Uh, Jerry, this is about the cost rising of police vehicles. Correct, Mayor. The, that we had ordered. That we had ordered. That mm -hmm. were canceled. We had to reorder because Ford canceled that. <clears throat> However, some of the responsibility is also on the vendor. And I gave a directive that we no longer use this vendor in the future, but we need these cars. So, we have to go. so Ford canceled the order and then? So we're told. And, and then raise the price? No, I'm not talking to Henry six, seven, or eight. You know? So I don't know if they actually did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I need a motion. So I'll move. Second. Oh, please go to roll. Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Guys, you read? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. And, you know, we had a presentation from the fire department before uh, to buy a uh, engine, and the price of those have uh, crept up too. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, a resolution adopting capital budget and plan. Uh, this is a capital plan that we've been trying to adopt nigh on two years. 2020. 2020, nigh on three years. Uh, you know, this is plan for Mimarinic's future, uh, as I talked about in the work session. Uh, by the time a lot of these projects will be up to be enacted, or this will probably not be the board that decides whether to enact them or not because it's a 10 year plan and uh, there's a lot of big stuff on the horizon, but it, this is a good exercise in identifying the village's needs, identifying uh, what you know projects the community should be aware are on the horizon. And uh, we are a very old community. We're one of the first suburbs. Uh, our sewer system, our water system, portable water system, our facilities, as uh, Manny pointed out, this facility here, is uh, in decrepit shape. And uh, hopefully this board and boards in the future will work to bring this uh, community back into the 21st century. Thank you. We also plan to um, provide this plan to our rating agencies the next time we are under the Make sure we're, they're aware of the fact that we are planning and that we uh, are aware of everything that's coming down, down the line. Can I make a motion? Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> Augustino. 
Trustees, Rawlings? Yes. Geyser Reed? Young? Yes. Lucas? Um, I, I, as I said in the work session, I have a couple concerns. One, this is a capital um, plan. It's not a budget. There are no numbers tied to it. And um, we haven't tied it. We haven't backtracked to see how this is going to affect our operating budgets. And so for the, and I, I appreciate all the work the staff has done. I know that we have a lot to do. And we have um, made progress in identifying projects we need to do. But I think we need to really figure out how much this year and the next four years are going to cost us. And I think it has to be close, more closely tied to numbers. So I'm saying no at this stage. Hey, Murphy. Uh, I, I appreciate staff's hard work on this. Uh, we have been trying to get this done uh, for three years now. Uh, it, every, every time we had gotten near, uh, it seemed the ball was moved and there was more information needed. And uh, you know, I, I think what is important is that you know, as a board, you need to take a 20,000 feet view of the community. And uh, we, we don't need uh, to pull every project apart to know what it's gonna cost because we have no idea what a project's gonna cost in two or three years. So I'm gonna vote yes. And that concludes the regular session. Communication for board round two. They're all done. Oh God, I think we've finished them off. <laughs> it's just a- uh... Update from the village manager. Uh, Mayor, um, Deputy Village Manager Dan Sarnoff has an update before I use uh, some time to update the board on the uh, um, flood mitigation part. Mr. Sarnoff, thank you. Um, around the same time that this board was meeting here, regular meeting on January 23rd. The Westchester County Board of Legislators was also meeting and approved $1,365,420 and 24 cents in additional grant funding for the Hillside Avenue Bridge. For the so uh, that, that brings our total grant funding for the bridge to around $5.3 million. Uh, and uh, hopefully a very minimal charge of any to the uh, I, I want to point out that uh, I've spoke to a lot of people who were at that meeting and that Mr. Sonoff uh, had an excellent uh, presentation. It was not a question he couldn't answer. Uh, and uh, they had to vote yes because Dan had them down cold on everything. <laughs> so Dan, I, I want to thank you for that. And I, and I heard that from legislators, and I heard that from the town of uh, Rise representative, and uh, I appreciate everything you did. Thank you. Mayor, so I'll start backwards. We'll take just a, a few minutes. Let's we'll go backwards. Yeah, I'll start backwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. I might talk backwards too. <laughs> That'd be a trick. The, um, the Army Corps and the DC, as I mentioned earlier, um, did make a site visit last week to the, uh, to the village of Mamarna to review and visit all of the locations that were presented to, uh, uh, to them regarding our intention to dredge. Um, prior to that, we had a very successful meeting in New Falls uh, with the DEC, Department of State, all of the legislators were there, their staff, as well as the Army Corps. So we have the approval under uh, a maintenance agreement, uh, what the DC called the general permit and the Army Corps, which has 57 different permits, but we're looking for a specific one um, to dredge the larger material that's in the Sheldrake River from the town village line up to Mamaric Avenue, the Hillside Avenue Bridge, North Barry Extension, roadway overpass, and preliminarily, Beaver Swamp Brook. However, Beaver Swamp Brook, um, when they looked at it last week, um, they're looking to tie in a culvert or an overpass um, to the provisions that are in the general permit. So we have to do a little bit more work on that. Sure. The areas that they've told us that they do not want us to go into is, of course, the tidal area of the Beaver Swamp Brook. That's near right now. So so not the so the Rhineck one is where they want to do it with the culvert? Yeah, the Rhineck mm -hmm. one up near the high school is okay. It's, it's the one further down. 
near right. shore acres. Under Bluffton Post Road, they don't want. They, they don't want us. However, they did identify, and they have asked us to work with the town to eliminate the restriction, which I believe that I have presented to the board at some mm -hmm. point uh, when um, uh, ethics board member Maria DeRose had had um, had me out there to take a look at that footbridge behind Continental View, which. Um, the, um, both the Army Corps and the DDC said is a significant choke point and needs to be um, widened or eliminated. So, or raised. I mean, can they get rid of the whole foot? They're saying get rid of the footbridge. Yeah, but it, it can be a different structure as long as it doesn't have that choke point right, going through. Um, so, our team, at uh, our consultant team, our coastal resource team, GEI, um, they now have the studies that they've asked for from the Army Corps. They call it the HECRAS, uh, HEC dead RAS, which are hydraulic models that the Army Corps performed during the um, during the study portion of our current project. Um, they also learned from the state DEC that their consultant, who they hired uh, for the New York Resiliency Study, uh, is providing the bathymetry and topography areas or topography study within two weeks now. It was three weeks, but that was a week ago. So within two weeks, we'll have a study that if, um, if we had to do it ourselves, would have cost us in excess of $100,000. So the state is really coming to the table. Uh, what we do need and what we have to, um, what we have to do with our consulting is create cross sections of all the proposed dredging areas uh, to make sure that the Army Corps and the DEC are aware of exactly the extent that we have to, uh, that we want to dredge. One last thing on the Army Corps project. Um, the Army Corps um, has shared with us that they will have a 90 degree, 90% design for the Ward Avenue Bridge completed on um, in July of this year. It's ahead of schedule, right? It is ahead of schedule. Uh, the good news about the Ward Avenue Bridge is that currently right now it is um, 45 foot wide and 16 foot deep. It will become 85 foot wide and 20 foot deep. Um, it will eliminate Ward Avenue Park, which um, is a small neighborhood park, and it's a shame that we're losing it, but we're, we're gaining uh, a significant, a significant um, flow. So the Army Corps says that um, it will reduce flooding and the Ward Avenue in the Ward Avenue area by six and a half feet. Ooh. Wow. And the hydraulic opening currently is uh, six, 622 feet. And we'll go to 1,517 feet. Um, so the Ward Avenue Bridge, once completed, will be able to accept two and a half times the volume that it currently accepts right wow. now. Wow. So and that'll help where we get out of the community. Right. Hmm? So, so I think that many, many times yeah. they have to start from the, from, the, from the furthest most point and then move mm -hmm. into the interior of the, of the community. So Ward Avenue Bridge, they will be here. Uh, before July or at in July to present this with a 90% design. Do they know when construction will start? No, they, they don't know that. They haven't, they haven't, uh, if they know it, they haven't said, haven't said uh, anything. Uh, they will be though at the, um, at the Murphy Brothers storage. Um, Wednesday? February 15th at the, uh, I think it's 5, 5, 15, 5 p.m. Um, to address, to address a private business group. Private business group, yep. And, uh, the village engineer, myself, and the village building inspector will be there um, as well. We were invited to attend. And I think the Board of Trustees has also been invited at the at some March. subsequent meeting. Yeah, in March. March, but that's pub that's noticed on our website. Yeah, right. So that, that's a little different. Yeah. That's my update. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Can you is it do you think we should do this like every at every meeting, I can, do it, I can do it once a month. Yeah, as long as I have new information. If I don't have new information, then okay. just say that maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll have it. Yeah. Well, and if you do the Google document, that will help too. I just think that, yeah, you mean you're talking about the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. If they do the spreadsheet, there'll be an update that I can mm -hmm. provide mm -hmm. on that. Okay, okay. Uh, can this oh, sorry, one more thing. Can this go in um, the newsletter on this week's newsletter? What's that? What you just said? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, report from the clerk treasurer. Yes, ma'am. Railroad parking so, permit. Hold, hold, hold that. Um, just uh, don't forget the uh, uh, community for the environment. Never. 
Oh, yeah. thank you. Oh, for yeah. reminding you know me. what? I it was there, and then I zoned thank out. Good me. job. Uh -huh. <laughs> Does that have... What? Right. We're gonna we're gonna add that committee for the environment member right have, now. I have it. Okay. Yeah. I need a motion to add an item to the agenda. So, Second. All in favor of adding the item to the agenda. Aye. Aye. Nora, would you like to make the motion? I'd like to add, I forgot her name though. I'd like to add, I gotta look this up. I gotta find a resume. I'd like to add a member to the committee of the environment to the agenda. That's the motion. But do you no, we need a name. I don't have, I have to, I'm trying to look it up. I'm looking it up. We don't have the name of this person. Sally. <laughs> Mayor, I don't because I don't have the executive session backup. It wasn't on it. It wasn't on it. I think she. Yeah, mine either. All right, we're gonna we're gonna add this person next week. Yeah. Good job. No, no, next time. We're all tired. It's late. Uh, we can stop. Next up, uh, clerk treasurer. Yes, Mayor. Uh, railroad parking permits are due to expire February 28, twenty twenty three. Renewal, renewals will be smelled uh, in the next week. Uh, new, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. New permits may be purchased in person or online beginning March 1st, 2023. The village will be given a two week grace period. Uh, thank you. Bob, well, I got a question for you. Yes, Mayor. That, it's an important question about open meetings law. Let me go to Club Cub Reporters. Um, <laughs> the, uh, there was there was there was a meeting with the DEC at the New Paltz. The meeting you described earlier. The meeting you described. Trustee Young accompanied the village manager. I was on Zoom. I made a statement at the beginning of Zoom. Lonnie was on the phone, not on Zoom. Never, never made uh, a peep. I uh, just listened intently. Uh, there was social media chatter that we were violating the open meetings law. Will we violate any open meeting? In my opinion, no. Can you explain why we weren't violating it? I can give you, I can give you a fuller explanation based on the email that I sent to the board and to uh, the clerk treasurer. But the basic reason is that it was a DEC meeting that the, the regional director of the DEC who convened the meeting is not a public body uh, as that term is defined in the open meetings law. And therefore it was not a public meeting that required uh, even though there were three members of the board present in one form or another. Okay. And no decisions were made. No decisions were made. But that's, yeah. that's I mean, I was there advocating for this community. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just want to clear that up. Uh, minutes, boards, committees, uh, minutes of the board of trustees, work session and regular meeting of January 23rd, and special meeting. January 30th, 2023. Minutes of the Board of Architecture Review Meeting of December 22nd, 2020. Minutes of the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission Meeting of January 10th and January 18th, 2020. Minutes of the Planning Board Meeting of January 28th and January 11th, 2020. Of June, I'm sorry, of July 28th, 2020 and January 11th, 2023. Minutes of the Budget Committee Meeting of November 1st and December 1st, 2020. Minutes of the Recreation and Parks Commission meeting of December 7th, 2020. Minutes of the Board of Ethics uh, meeting of December 15th, 2022. Uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I want to wish you all uh, to celebrate a <laughs> yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Your love 365 days out of the year, not just that one day. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really hard to some of us have that. obligations. <laughs> 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 Sometimes. <laughs> uh, for those of us who are obligated and who are enjoy, enjoy being obligated, uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. And uh, we will see you here again on February 27th for more Village of America Board of Trustee meeting right on this channel. I need a motion to close the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 On this channel. Falsino has the line of the night, by the way. What? Well, you know, what is that? Well, if the town leaves LMC, we're going to be called MTV. <laughs> <laughs> you say that. What do you mean, your breath? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That would be great. Only the name, not the rest of it, right? Yes. Thanks. Uh, like I, fish. I, I, you still smell the fish? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, where, where is it? Who's in the fish? Oh, it's like coming through the vents, I think. It, 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 it did smell, right? There was something like that. that when I came no, it, the smell that you were smelling is this. Those up for me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> part of the but I was smelled fish earlier. 